radio or drive into the punk rock show. Well, I don't want to hear, don't want to hear your podcast. No, I don't want to hear, don't want to hear your podcast. I've got nothing to do today, and you got so many things to say. Still, I don't want to hear, don't want to hear your podcast. No, I don't want to hear, don't want to hear your podcast. You're just another voice in the crowd And you don't just say what's not allowed You brought a new pop filter and a fancy microphone So go enjoy yourself and leave me alone Friday. Happy Friday. Yeah. Welcome to Liberty Late Night. Look at, oh, there's usually a thing there, isn't there? Tape. Yep. Hi, what Mary. See, we let kids down here. And this is Dave. In case this you didn't recognize him. Oh. Careful, it's, it's sensitive. Is it's it? weird. It, yeah. I bet. I'm sorry. I'm like always like, let me touch your it's face. Prickly when you touch it. <laughs> <laughs> New boyfriend. All right. So we got, no. we got like 10 minutes before. Yeah. We, 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 Good no, it kind of kind of hurts. Like ah, uh, it's uh, I don't yeah. like it. You're 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 just uh, not used to that where no. it like brushes and it mm-hmm. it moves your whole face. Yeah, yeah. I know. Do I have tape somewhere? Uh, I'm sure we do. All right. But look at I'm gonna just do that. Post a note. Hey. Save the now day. You're gonna have like an invisible nope, hole. It didn't do. Work. Oh. Oh wait, if it stays there, it works. It ain't gonna but stay it there. Want to stay? That's okay. So I didn't realize we were starting. We have a, we have a guest tonight, guys. Yeah, we got to been a minute, and I didn't realize that we were starting like right away. Say hello so. to everybody. Oh, with Let's say hello to everybody. Into the living room. Say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Just in the living room. Everybody. You should say it. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Oh, All sure. right. You want to do the thing? Sure, I will cool. do the thing. Josh is first, As and usual. he is proud. Hello. Thank you. I'm trying. Joshua? He is so proud. What's up, bud? How you doing, meatbag? Bud? Bud? <laughs> there he is. Hey, bud. What's shaking? Lyle's here. He was on YouTube, but now he's on Twitch. Twitch is the place hey, to be. It is. Jamie Lynn is here. Hi, Jamie. Ah, Easiest place Jamie. to monetize. 
and we can do whatever we want there. And we can, I've, yeah. I mean, we've lucked out with, yeah. yeah we, we still got, have to be got careful. Little bands. But yeah, got little, little bands tiny bands. Little small bands as a treat. Brooke's here. We need a button for Brooke. Yeah, we do. A button for Brooke, a button for J4. Here, this is a new button I made. Okay. I am untethered and my rage knows no bounds. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I don't know He's how often so I'll funny. Get to use that. Yeah, but he is so funny. That character, those people, it's always sunny. They're just terrible. They're the, they're <laughs> awful people, but it's a funny, funny show. Uh, Dottie! Hi, Dottie! Dottie. Nice. nice to see you here. Nice. How are you? Uh, Carl's here. He is excited that it's Friday. Yes. Carl! I know you've done something. I hope that you have um, tomorrow off, Carl. I hope you have a weekend to relax and enjoy, right? Yes. Dawn in Alabama. What's up, buddy? Uh, Meow. We'll, put, we'll play you a button. Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> now, I remember that last week we watched Cannonball Run. Oh, yeah. Yay for me. And we Where did we take it off the wheel because I made Dave take it off the wheel right then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hopefully I saved it. Let's go to the so, wheel room. So, yeah. Let's go to the wheel. Which one? Oh, select the right one. OBS is cool. Oh, okay. It lets me know that that's the, the browser that it's looking at. Okay. Okay. Oh, neat. All right. Every Sunday night at 9 Eastern, we watch mm -hmm. a movie on our secret movie channel that you can only find out about if you're in our Facebook group or mm -hmm. on our Discord. If we had a mod, he'd give you those links, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. He, you guys, he, just hit me up. Give me a call. He's, he's allowed to take weekends off sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> he's playing right there. now they're playing, with the playing their video games. Uh, yeah. He, he, he is. He's playing uh, Rocket League with yeah, David, and I think Chris is going to play. As I long asked, as he's keeping Alan uh, occupied. I asked, uh, <laughs> yeah, I asked David if they could move over to the Minecraft Discord chat so that Chris could also chat since he'll be playing, and David's like, oh. and I'm like, what's the big deal? <laughs> so if you can ha have any sway on that, Brooke, I think it'd be nice for Chris to be able to also engage in conversation with everybody, but anywho. Ready? Uh, yeah, let's, let's do this. I'm sorry that it rained all day, Carl. Mm, hot shower. I'll time card next week. There you go. There you go. My blue heaven. I was just thinking about oh that in the gosh, shower that's today. Steve Martin, right? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's like a, 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 a mafia guy that's in the witness relocation program. It's pretty okay. funny. Oh, it's good. an older one. I just, I've been really, really enjoying up, the movies Joe? we've been watching, like the late 70s, early 80s yeah. movies. Yeah, and you know, these are like old so movies. So that you, so much fun. You might not watch, you know? Yeah. That's why I don't feel too bad. Like, the new blockbusters, I'm not as interested in. The plus, that's okay for those. We're always, like, 10 years later yeah. stuff, so it's totally fine. <laughs> but we'll watch these, these old things together. Hi, Joe! We'll push your button as soon as we get back. Yeah, let's get back to the yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm not playing any kind of drinking game. <laughs> yeah, hey, Watch Joe. Watch, I only cut that enough. What's going on? I was just oh, saying, uh, I, I was hoping for uh, for David and everybody to move over to the... Uh, that's okay. I do too, Brooke. No big deal. Um, I was hoping for everyone to move over to the um, Minecraft Discord chat for the game that they're playing. I'm talking to Brooke, everybody, yeah, so don't try fine. and move Everybody's in. Everybody's wait. <laughs> uh, because I, because Chris, that's he's, you know, he, he's he can't get into Alan's chat, and he should not be in Alan's chat. So, um, if everyone there can just move over. You know, so Chris can chat, but yeah, they're all playing a uh, Rocket they're, they're League. All playing Rocket League, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was really popular a few years ago, but evidently, it's it's not like old games aren't fun. Like David just uh, installed. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank what is you, it? Brooke. Thank you, thank you. I it's mean, if everybody already has the Minecraft one? Discord, you know why not? What's the other one? Halo Three is fun no. as you know oh, what. Yeah, that's the best one. It's seriously, and we've been playing that for years. You know, I like can't think it, of the game. at least fourteen years. So, Battlefield uh, Two. That's what oh it is. no, you need a new game. All right, Carl, get Rocket League. <laughs> you play soccer with cars. With cars, yeah, and be prepared for a lot of yelling from David. Hey, there's the side. mobility independence. I don't condition. know if everyone else is yelling as much as he is. I can only hear him. So, mm-hmm. Oh, that. Doom. Oh, my gosh. Doom, man. I remember when Doom came out. Uh, it was... I was in high school. Yeah. And I was playing 
What's that game that you, you know, the little bombs, you know, you try to click? Minesweeper? Minesweeper! Yeah, and Hello, uh, all Richard. the boys were playing Doom, and all the girls were playing, like, SimCity or Minesweeper or Solitaire. <laughs> hey, Richard, here again! Is this, like, four weeks in a row or five? Yeah, you did a reaction. Um, Thanks for being here. Yeah, Let's clap, clap for that, you stupid bastard. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're getting close. I should probably yeah, give it a close. Oh, there went my earbud again. It's doing a weird thing. Oh. I, I oh, I forgot pulled, to turn on the heat. I pulled on it. Well, we don't have to until the interview I'm gonna do starts. Right now. Uh, five weeks in a row. Oh, they're switching over. Thank you. I didn't feel like it was a big ask, you know, <laughs> like the quick switch you know especially when someone can like manipulate the the people in discord to, like grab them and put them <laughs> in another group so thank you thank you very much malarkey watch 2021 i gotta update that wow four I'm kids are just as bright yeah. and just as talented as white kids mm. <laughs> i just love that my goodness ah oh, time is a weird thing you know time is a really weird thing mm -hmm. just like 2021 and there was 2020. Y'all getting all those things, those Facebook memories that say things like, you know, oh, COVID crap. They shut us down, Murner. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you live in somewhere like not our state. <laughs> oh, wait. That, oh, that's um, what I wanted to do. Oh, are you writing notes on my thing here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just because um, it was there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. I, I have I to know. write a note. I forgot to check my audio here. Um, is everybody ready for the eclipse? Do you guys, y'all, y'all excited? Can anyone else see it like we can? Because oh, okay. where we live, we are in the path of totality. Uh, anybody else going somewhere oh, to see it, or, or you won't get much of it there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you hear the hotels are charging like a thousand dollars a night? Because they can. Yeah. Because <laughs> oh, they wow. can. We yep. should rent out a garage. I'll mm -hmm. put everything in the yard. Hey, look at that. He's here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm hopeful for good weather here. I'm very nervous how the weather's going to be. I'm very nervous. Uh, yeah, not going to see a thing here. Oh, no. Someone a few years ago. Well, I saw, we saw one here in 2017 and, uh, I was like, oh, and then they talked about 2024 and I'm like, what? Oh my gosh. So I was really excited and been looking forward to it. And it's, it, I hope it doesn't rain. Can we hear each other? <laughs> Can you oh, hear me? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Can we? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't oh, have good. You... Okay. Oh, good. Oh, I'm excited. I don't have audio or anything on for you yet, but I like this setup in the background. Okay. But yep, still talk fine. about it on the show. Uh, <laughs> we, we. Oh, yeah. That's, I, it's Dave on purpose. will bring you on in just a second. Yep. That's there. all right. Yeah, it is. Nice to hear your voice again. I'm excited. Sure. <laughs> Do you have a special button you're going to push, Dave? A button? A special button? No. You what, have what? buttons to bring him down on oh, the yeah, screen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should turn him on. It work. See if it works. Hey, your name's too big for the little sign. Ah, <laughs> there we go. That's all right. We have a very long last name, and so it's, it's uh, about as long as yours. Yeah. So I'm, when I sign for credit card receipts, I'm just like signing up the side. But uh, <laughs> Jacob, it is so nice to have you back. So Thank you're an you author. You're the founder, or founder of the Future of Freedom Foundation. You're an author. Did I say author? Presidential it's candidate. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. We had you on before. We had a great conversation. And some of our friends were asking to have a guest on again. And your, your name popped up real quick to us. So Yeah. We had so much fun chatting with you. Well, thank you. It's really nice to be back. It's an honor to be back. I had a good time talking with y'all. And so oh, uh, this is nice. <laughs> nice way to spend a Friday evening. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's Keeps us been out a of trouble. few years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's been a few years. And I know uh, I'm wondering about Cassie. How is Cassie doing? Well, <laughs> since you ask that during the snow about... Oh, three months ago, she took a nasty spill oh. and oh, no. tore her ACL or the dog's counterpart to the ACL. Yeah. And uh, so it was a, it's been a tough two months, but yeah. the, the vet said, I don't think she needs surgery. I think it's going to heal on its own. It's apparently a minor tear, but, um, and she's doing really well. I mean, she's now okay. putting all her weight on all four paws when she walks 
She still is a little bit tender when she gets up, but everything's working out well. It was tough the first month. She couldn't make it up the stairs of my townhouse and mm -hmm. tried to put her in the oh, yeah. basement. And that didn't sit well with her. So she insisted I sleep with her. So I had to get my <laughs> sleeping bag and sleep on the floor with my dog. Oh, my and, gosh. Oh, my you know. gosh. <laughs> because that's what you do when your dog needs you like that. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And what's funny <laughs> is that in, our, in my bed, she sleeps in, a, in her corner, the right foot of the bed. And she mm -hmm. never comes up and cuddles next to me. And, okay. but downstairs in the basement, when I was sleeping in my sleepy bag, she came and slept next to me all night long. Oh, <laughs> oh, what a sweetheart. Oh my no gosh. <laughs> oh yeah. She no, just, no, no. She's, yeah. Needed that comfort. She's great. Huh? Let me just, let me just. <gasps> oh, yes, I was, was going to try to find a dog. picture. Yes, he look. Hi. Yes, he oh, there's dogs. my princess. Yes. Hi, she's baby. a good dog. Yeah. Oh, We're talking about God. you. <laughs> Yay. Th you know, oh. thank you so much for that. Because last time she was yeah. in bed, and so everyone's like, "We want to see the dog." <laughs> yeah, most, most, yeah. Our, our viewers always get angry when we, yeah. we don't show the animal. Talk about pets, but not show them. <laughs> well, this is this is my princess. I mean, she's really my princess. She has brought yeah. so much joy to my life. This is the best thing I've ever done. Oh, this so was happy my my you. COVID gift to myself. I started working from home, and I said, "My gosh, I can have a dog." Yes, because uh, you're going to be there because dogs need, you know, you can't be gone too too much, yeah, you know. Like yeah. Right. Uh, and I didn't want to put her into daycare or something sure. like that. Oh, my uh, goodness. And I trained her myself, and uh, that's been very gratifying because I we go out in the woods and I let her loose. That's and nice. Her, re her recall is perfect. She'll chase after deer and squirrel, and but when I call her back, she'll come right back. She comes right back. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. so nice. Yeah, we, I got a fail safe. I got a GPS collar on her just in okay. case. Okay, I was like, oh. now just in case if she's like so focused that she just <laughs> couldn't get away. <laughs> exactly. That's uh, nice though. A GPS collar, okay, because a lot of people do like the chip, oh, the chip yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, I, we got a cat um, who found us and <laughs> it chose us really. Um, and so we went to have him scan for a chip and, and then we tried to find his owner, but you know, nobody claimed him. So he's ours now. Um, but I, I never knew really how I felt about the chip for animals, you know, like, Oh, I, it freaks us out as yeah, humans. Just as a human, like, <laughs> Oh no, where are we next? <laughs> like, hey, have you ever had a dentist fill you a filling in your teeth? Uh Oh, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. they know exactly where you are from the here on out. Uh oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's I love it. when they put the tracking device in oh, you. Oh, that's when. Okay. Oh, there it comes. <laughs> <laughs> I probably got a few of those then. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, it is, it is good to have you back. And how have the last few years been treating you? Yeah, because it's, it's been like three it, years. It has, uh, YouTube said that it was three years since our last hangout time. So what's oh, been wow. going on for you? I mean, time flies, but any kind of major things, I, our children are still awake upstairs running around. So we hear <laughs> loud noises. <laughs> uh life's just been great i mean i just i'm just so fortunate i've got so many blessings to count and uh you know it's randy i run the future of freedom foundation i absolutely love my work i i can't even imagine retiring mm -hmm. and so life's been very good for the last three years and now i jumped into this race for the libertarian party presidential nomination again and that's that. been that's been fun uh going after that again so uh yeah life's really good i'm just very grateful that's that's wonderful that you have something that you're so passionate about that you feel like i don't want to retire from oh, yeah. doing this you know that's a really nice feeling that you have that because a lot of it really don't. is i mean to be able to do what you want in life at work wise mm -hmm. that you know, i would do it for free mm -hmm. and to be able to do it as an avocation a vocation it, it's just been it's just been marvelous. I mean, yeah. I started out my life as a trial attorney and I practiced law for 12 years and I like practicing law, um, but this was my passion. And to be able to do this for a living, it's just been a remarkable journey. And That's wonderful. Really yeah. yeah. Yep. I, mean, I love, I love getting up at, you know, six 30 in the morning and getting ready to go to work. I, mean, it's wow. just really, I have a bunch <laughs> of friends who are retired and I said, I can't even imagine no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but having that purpose, you know, and just that, that feeling of, you know, why, why leave something that brings you so much joy, you know? 
Exactly. Yeah, that's... You know, because when you do the things on the side, that's enjoyable. Um, mm -hmm. But if all of a sudden that was all you did every day, I, I think I'd tire very easy, very quickly yeah. of those kind of mm -hmm. hobbies. Yes. Yep. <laughs> like that, I need that energy. I get up at uh, five thirty every morning, and I've been doing it for like a, at least a decade. And I, no. I, well, oh yeah, you, oh, you on were on shift. second and first also, but, but or I, I, I can't get used to that five thirty in the morning. <laughs> like I don't think it's natural for me. You know. Mm. I want to be a morning person. I yeah. do, but I just I find myself more of a night owl, and <laughs> I'm like I really want to like the morning, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, I can change. <laughs> I, I so. love the early morning. I mean, I, that's great. When we were actually working at the office before COVID, uh, we would get to work at six in the morning and then we'd leave at two, mm -hmm. which was great because you missed yeah. traffic in both directions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Yep. Just waving to folks yeah. coming in here. So, <laughs> yeah, Ryan Edwards is here. Okay. He's the one who invited you on the first time because mm -hmm. I rewatched the stream. And that's another thing I noticed is that. I happen to notice you said that you weren't interested in running for president again after the last race. What what made you decide to jump back in this year? Oh, did I actually say that? Yeah, I caught it. <laughs> That's very interesting. That's very revealing. Uh, well, I just uh, I was started giving it a lot of thought, and I just I really uh, oppose the message that has been put out by the party for mm -hmm. at least twenty years now in yeah. our presidential campaigns, and that has come to define the party. And I, I, I believe the American voters who reject this message, 99%, uh, we get 1% three years ago, we're now at 0% in the latest poll. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm with the 100%. I, I think this is a bad message we've been putting out in this party. And so I said, I'm going to give it another try and, and give you know LP members a choice again. If mm -hmm. you want to go with the standard message, okay. But we already know the results of the 2024 election insofar as the LP is concerned, because if voters haven't changed their sentiment over the last three years, and it's actually gotten worse from 1% down to 0%, it's not going to change over the next six or seven months. Yeah. Why would it? And so that's why I say if, if you want a major breakout in votes, you got to change directions completely. And, yeah. and your only shot for that, to me, is a campaign of pure libertarian principles instead of the message we've been sending out mm -hmm. that uh, violates our principles. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's why I decided to jump back in and, and make the case for running the candidacy based on 100 percent on genuine libertarian principles. I love that. I do. I do like that. Yeah. I was gonna, it's it's yeah. like, what's the point even if you're going to do, uh, mm. you know, Republican light or Democrat light, you know, we're watering it down a lot. No, we gotta, yeah. we have to present a third, a third option. Yeah, totally I think you different. were the one who, had, when you said they were watering it down, just the way you said it like that, it's like, oh man, that makes a lot of sense, you know, that, and it needs to be what it is, you know, what it always has been, uh, the principles and you don't stray from that because then you're just like the other parties who are doing that just to get votes. It's really gratifying to hear you talk about it like that. Can y'all start going to the conventions with me? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I yeah, mean, it, it's, it, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, that's the whole thing. We are libertarians. Mm -hmm. We are not Republicans. We're not Democrats. We're not Republican lights. We, we stand for a certain set of principles. And I think the original idea of watering down these principles was this is the way we get votes. Mm -hmm. And uh, because these prints, these compromises are popular in the Republican Party, right. which has traditionally been the party that we target uh, for votes. And my position is, is that not only does it not garner votes because there's no constituency out there for it. There is in the Republican Party. But, for example, if, if you've got a Libertarian Party candidate taking this watered down position and he's got an L next to his name, he's going to get zero to one percent. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe two at most in a, in a congressional race. If he's got R next to his name with the same positions, he has a chance to win. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that's the big distinction here. Now, my argument is, OK, this message cannot garner votes, but a message of principle can garner votes, that there is a constituency out there that is yearning for leadership and liberty. 
and they will come and vote for a candidate, libertarian candidate next with has an L next to him, mm -hmm. but only if he's got this set of principles. If he goes off of this watered down position, they're going to stay at home and say to heck with you, you're part of the system. You're just like the other parties. And so that's my argument is that not only should be running a, a message of principle of freedom, because that's that's what we're about. I say that our job in the Libertarian Party is to lead America to freedom. Well, in order to do that, you got your get your own house in order. And my argument is you get your own house in order, you restore your sound founding principles, you reject all this watered down business. I contend that we could achieve a major breakout in votes on that basis. I would really like to see that, you know, uh, as far as um, like the not watered down thing for someone to come out and not be wishy washy and just say, hey, this is our platform and this is what we, the Libertarian Party, has stood for. And we're going back to that. You know, we're not just draw the line. You know, we're not going to hmm, make this a gray area here. Like, nope, it is what it is. And that's that's what it is <laughs> i like i like con's comment here he says libertarians get afraid to vote for a third party because the side they think is closer match might win if they vote for them they're afraid to vote libertarian and and i think that's something that the mainstream media uses too is that and, and they do it to us every year we're like oh you voted for the libertarian and that's why our guy lost he stole the votes away and stuff like that and they use this mm. fear like and then it gets back to that we got to vote for this guy so that guy that guy doesn't win and i hate yeah. that voting against people right and that's how we got <laughs> lesser of both evils has given us so much evil yep well the, the the part of the problem is is that is there's just been this mindset in the party that we need to be targeting republicans mm -hmm. or mainstream americans and that, that in order to get those republicans like the ron paul voters that's that's one of the favorite mm -hmm. little mantras the party of ron paul well, Ron Paul was a Republican when he got that big surge of votes. Yeah. And the idea is, oh, well, those Republicans will come over. They'll vote for us because we stand for the same things Ron Paul does. They'll never cross party lines. If, if they were going to cross party lines, we wouldn't have been at 1% three years ago. We would have had it 10%. So my argument is we need to find different groups to target where they become our voters mm -hmm. that are excited about it. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you an example of this. In, in 20 years ago, I ran for U.S. Senate in Virginia against one of the most popular governors in the history of the state, John Warner. He was chairman of the Armed Services Committee. He had been married <laughs> to the famous actress Elizabeth Taylor. Mm. And this was right after the 9-11 attacks. Wow. I knew I would not get one Republican vote, and I didn't care. The Democrats weren't running anybody, but I knew I wouldn't get their vote either because I was calling for the immediate repeal, no gradualism, of Social Security, Medicare, <laughs> Medicaid, every welfare state program, public schooling. I was yeah. not calling for vouchers and open borders. So I knew that all the default Democratic votes would go to the LaRouche in the campaign. And I had no money, but I targeted blacks here in Virginia. I went to their concerts and I passed out my card and told them that how I felt about the drug war, which I consider is the most racist government program since mm -hmm. segregation. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I went to his Hispanic neighborhoods. I said, I want open borders. What we're doing down there is horrible. And then I walked into the office. Well, I made an appointment with a black minister. The, who, the minister was the Alfred Street Baptist Church, one of the most prominent black ministers in the country. He got elected to the African-American Hall of Fame. And I said, Pastor Peterson, it was John O. Peterson. I, I said, this is what I stand for. And, and I said, I, I favor open borders. What we're doing there to people violates the second greatest commandment is enunciated by our Lord Jesus Christ, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. I oppose the drug war, which is the most racist government program since segregation. I want to get rid of Social Security, Medicare, the whole welfare state. It's created this mindset of dependency. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've explained to this whole uncompromising package and at the end of this conversation, it's one of the biggest honors I've ever gotten. He looked at me and he said, Mr. Hornberger, I'm going to endorse your candidacy. And he knew I couldn't win, but he says, mm -hmm. take this letter of endorsement to every black minister in the state and you tell him I'm endorsing you. Nice. And I did. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> my opponents in the in the party, the water downer people, uh, were mocking me and ridiculing me, saying he's going to get less than half a percent because look at his radical positions and so mm -hmm. forth. Well, I ended up, this is 20 years ago, 7% of the statewide vote. 
Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Seven percent. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Really good. <laughs> that's that's with no money. Yeah. I mean, if I had a large sum of money, I have no doubts that I could have easily gotten to ten. And so that's my argument here: is that we don't need to resign ourselves to point zero one or point zero two or whatever mm -hmm. the, the small numbers. I I am confident I could double what I did twenty years ago because libertarianism is almost a household term now. It but is. by targeting different groups, don't target Republicans. Go after Republicans. They're just the flip side of the Democrats. It's one party divided into two wings. Mm -hmm. Concentrate on migrant families. I mean, it's it's the common perception is that if you favor immigration controls, which all my opponents in the in the race favor, that that's a big vote getter mm -hmm. because there's so many people favor immigration controls. Actually, it's the exact opposite. We're at zero percent in the polls. Because every single right wing proponent of immigration controls is going to vote for Donald Trump mm -hmm. without exception. They're not going to waste their vote on the LP candidate. Yeah. Especially <laughs> since Trump's going to be saying they're going to steal it from us again. You got to flood the, the ballot oh. box. Now, look at my position open borders. There are millions of, of migrant families across America, especially Hispanic families, that are horrified by what's been going on the border for 80 years. Those are our voters. That and then you you combine that with black voters that that are sick and tired of this racist war on drugs. The fifty percent of people who don't vote, there's there's a reason why the, they don't vote. But they will, I am convinced, they will come out and vote for the radical message of libertarianism because they'll see we're not part of the system. Yeah. Oh yeah. And <laughs> yeah. So and then the the fourth group that I would target is the people at the bottom of the economic ladder, the ones getting squeezed by inflation. Because when they those groups see that we we favor sound money and the separation of money in the state, they'll say, wow, I don't have to deal with this inflation anymore with these libertarians. So if you target these four groups, I have no doubts I can double what I did 20 years ago, which means 10 to 15 percent. Yeah, that inflation thing, that's Ooh. really big right now. <laughs> like where I'm feeling I got three kids I'm trying to feed <sighs> and, and trips to the grocery Growing store. <laughs> children, yeah. But I, a lot of people don't understand what's happening to the money and why why their groceries are more expensive. They're, they're, they're thinking that it's greedy corporations, it's supply chain issues, and, and nobody understands that it's just the dollar in your pocket is well, worth less. When, what you told me the other day, I almost threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> like, that the, uh, how much of the money uh, of the oh, dollars? Oh, 80% 80, 80 of the dollars in circulation have been produced in the last three or four years or something like that. Yeah, and I was like... Wait, 80% of the dollars in circulation <laughs> <laughs> have come out in the last few years? Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's, it's, it's incredible. It is freaking I mean, me out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and you see, hang on a second. My thing came out of here. <laughs> I love that. Too. Arizona iced tea holds its value better than the U.S. Yeah. dollar. It's still, well, still 99 cents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the thing is, is that if you take middle-class America, sort of well-to-do America, mm -hmm. they're able to adjust, okay, to the inflation, to the grocery store prices and other prices. They knock out a vacation or two, or then they'll knock out- They can survive, few, yeah. mm -hmm. They can survive. And they're not going to go with the radical, pure message of libertarianism. It, it's just too scary for them. Mm -hmm. You know, dismantle the whole public school system, dismantle Social Security, Medicare- that yeah. that <laughs> radicalness, you know, that scares these people. And so mm -hmm. they're just going to stay there and vote Republican mm -hmm. or Democrat, most likely Republican. Mm -hmm. The people that are paycheck to paycheck just barely making ends meet. They don't have any room to adjust yeah. as these prices yeah. are going up. I don't know Those are our survive. voters. Yeah. That, yeah. It's a survival thing. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feed your family when prices are going up at the grocery store 10, 20 percent? On yeah. every yeah. single Item. I watch it like bread, 50% 50, 50 more for bread now <laughs> since like three, four years ago. Yeah, it, all of it. It's just, it's so wild. Like, oh, okay, so this one up 50 cents, but then it's like, oh, wait, that one up 75 cents. Maybe this have is breakfast up a dollar. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> so you add all that up when you go to the grocery store. I mean, your your cart is less full, mm -hmm. as, and it, that's just kind of the trend, but it just seems it more hurts. so now than ever before that oh tremendously it is oh my goodness and, and you're right dave about people not understanding it but that's part of our job as libertarians is to let them know this is a government 
program here. Yeah. Yes. And it, it yep. is designed to, it's just a tax. That's all it is. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a secret surreptitious tax that they can blame on the big companies and the, the big corporations and the gas station mm-hmm. owners. But if, if you make the case for what's happened to the dollar, the currency, ever since Franklin Roosevelt uh, nationalized gold uh, back in the 30s, ever since the Federal Reserve was established in 1913, mm-hmm. those people will come and vote for us. I have no doubts they will vote for us be- if we make the case for sound money. Uh, not just in the Fed, which is the popular mantra, but getting government entirely out of money. This is what Friedrich Hayek called the denationalization of money, the separation of money in the state. And that's why that's another part of the message that I take to every convention is that, okay, if you want to go in there and just make the case for monetary reform, you, you know, put people to sleep, uh, get in there and make the libertarian case for a free market monetary system. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's basically find the find the libertarians that don't know they're libertarians. Yeah, yeah, and then they go, "Oh, I was a libertarian this whole time." That's I, I found out. I read a book, and I'm like, "Oh, yeah, we talked about the freedom to find." I'm like, "Yep, yeah, yeah, I agree with that." Yep, oh, yeah, I'm a libertarian. Yeah, I know that. You know, it is so fascinating to hear you say that, <laughs> because there's this sense, you know, in these debates, some of the questions is, "What would you say to the soccer mom or to the policeman that comes up to you and says it?" They want to vote Democrat or Republican. How are you going to convince them to vote Libertarian? Well, the truth is I probably wouldn't sit there and convince them of anything. Yeah, it's don't like, waste what's your time. I... Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Do what you said. Go try to find the, the people who are natural Libertarians. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, yeah. They like are there. That. It's yeah. a personality type. I know it. <laughs> yeah. And and you can find them by expressing the message. I mean, mm-hmm. that's how I learned, uh, discovered libertarianism. That I found four little books in the public library that were these hardcore, pure, principled essays. And yep. that was enough to crack this whole indoctrination layer that had been put on me in public schooling. But I mm-hmm. agree with you, man, that our job is to find libertarians, not to make them. I forgot. I yeah, think I, I made, I think I made I a that. Facebook page a long time ago that says you just might be a libertarian. It was oh, the Jeff, like, Jeff like the Jeff Foxworthy you might be a red. And I was trying to make memes like, if you believe this, and then you might be a libertarian. Yeah. <laughs> it never caught on. I, I don't think I have access to it Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Facebook. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, that that's it. Uh yeah, I think you hit the nail yeah, right on the head because there are people like us. We were statists. Oh, you yeah. know, we voted so hard for Republicans, <laughs> man. We walked home like, woo, we voted. We wore the sticker. And, and I never liked the person yeah. I voted for. No, yeah. It, but, it and just it couldn't was let like, that guy win. <laughs> we're, we are, you know, just straight Republican all the way down. Doesn't matter because, the you know, and, um, and I look back and I... You know, like, oh, (laughs) so we changed, you changed, you know, people can change their view, like not, not so much change, but like see through the, the veil that's there. Like, oh my gosh, it's not just the two parties Mm -hmm. that we have been brainwashed to believe that it is. And, and like Conneth said that if you feel that, oh, well, if I, if I put my vote towards you know, a different party besides Republican or Democrat, you know, I'm going to be the one who made the other guy win, you know, and it's like, so what, you know, go out and vote for for real vote, like your conscience, you know, like (laughs) what you really want. Um, And I have been bad at voting. I will say that I have been very bad at it. I have not (laughs) been partaking uh, oh, yeah, we as much as I should. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm so on and off about it. You know, it's like, oh, stand up and not do it. And then I'm like, but that kind of sucks because <laughs> I could at no. least write somebody in, you know, like, I mean, locally anyway, when it comes to like these elections and stuff. But um, yeah, well, I, th- I don't like, I don't think I the, the only reason I vote libertarian is to get our numbers up. But the message we've been putting out. I, it doesn't excite me at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, in fact, I reject it. I, I, I'm with the 100% who reject this message. And I tell that to conventions that this is my confession to you. I yes. reject this message as much as they do. and But I'll go and vote Libertarian. But if I were somebody out there, I, I, who gets excited over a message that violates your own principles? For example, yep. at the South Carolina debate, my opponents, most of them, they're just 
you know, took me to task for wanting to abolish Social Security. I mean, this is this really? is the crown jewel of American socialism. It's based on taxation. It's yeah. They they they're arguing that they're they're good and caring and compassionate because they want to continue it for a generation. And I'm there saying, how are you being good, caring, and compassionate through the IRS with money that's been stolen by mm-hmm. the IRS? You know, how's that caring and compassion? That's a, that's a weird hill to die on. Are you saying other libertarians are saying that yeah. they we shouldn't? do anything about social security well they, they no, probably no, have they, plans they want to do something about mm-hmm. it but they have a plan to continue it for 25 years minimum they, the next generation mm. and and so my argument is that you can't be free as long as you're living under socialism mm-hmm. and so it's it's what i call their 25 year plan for freedom that will be free in 25 years all right now who's going to get excited about that message you know, right. even libertarians you know like jacob Oh, you know, we're going to the barricades. Get your AR-15. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Oh, we've got a 25-year plan for freedom that we're going to achieve freedom 25 years from now. Oh, man, this is so exciting. I'll go get my gun and I'll meet y'all at the barricades. <laughs> Wait, I'm not going to give my life up for years? a 20 20- <laughs> I mean, that's even five, lo- five, years, five times longer than the five-year plans in the Soviet Union, mm-hmm. you know? And then the same with Medicare and Medicaid. They, they they feel that people will be dying in the streets if we get rid of these things. In other words, they're saying freedom means people dying in the streets. Right. Why do they say that? That bothers me so much. Oh. Like freedom means everyone is poor it's too dangerous. and and it's too dangerous. Yeah, everybody is, you know, laying in the side of the road in the gutter. You know, why why they're starving or on heroin. <laughs> yeah. <I agree>. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's like freedom uh, produces all these bad results, you know. Uh, oh, immigration controls separates me out from all the rest of the guys. Mm-hmm. Now they're going with the flow. This is the twenty-year flow of support immigration controls. Government's going to control the peaceful movements of people across borders. Violates the libertarian non-aggression principle. I mean, when you cross a border, you're not violating rights. So I'm I'm here advocating open borders and. You know, just the utilitarian case, I say, look, look what the system's brought. Death, suffering, perpetual crisis, and a massive police state along the border. Yeah. How in the world can that be libertarian? <laughs> I mean, if libertarianism produces it. death, suffering, a police state, and perpetual crisis, I don't have anything to do with it. <laughs> right. That's a bad philosophy. <laughs> that sounds pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, I like what um, freedom has never been safe. They're saying in the chat, freedom's dangerous because, I mean, it is, you know, like, but it's a but good, that's life. that's life, you know, life is dangerous. But Lyle says people these days are addicted to the illusion of safety and security. And I feel that even more so with uh, when COVID was around and everybody, oh, you the know, theater. The, the theater, the, the masks, the, the, the arrows on the floors. The, the air, yes. You have to go <laughs> in this door and come out the store, stay six feet apart, you know. Uh, and now they're saying like, oh, you can treat COVID just like the flu. And it's like, wow. That's what we did. I feel like hmm. <laughs> well, lives ruined, but realm. we can treat it like the flu. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fear is the corner of the realm in, in a mm-hmm. totalitarian state um, or you know any kind of oppressive system. They they need to keep people afraid, mm-hmm. agitated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they they engender the crises sometimes to create the fear. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because well, when when people are afraid, they'll, they're willing to give up their rights. Oh my gosh, Please so keep quickly. Me safe, safe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll, that, I'll that, do this, you know, and and just whatever, just keep me safe. Yeah, that's that so sad. That scene in V for Vendetta when the yeah. the public started getting a little bit out of control, and they're like, "All right, put on the put on the the virus, the wars, every everything they had, they <laughs> thrown it at the public to try to get them back into submission." Yeah. Yep. And it's that movie's that movie's crazy because oh. it's like, wow, that's yep, yeah, yep, yeah, check, check, check. That's such a. Did you see V for Vendetta? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Love oh, yeah. It. Every year. <laughs> I know. I'm pretty sure every year we we watch it. But, but uh, it was, uh, to me, it wasn't as good as Starship Troopers. Did y'all see Starship Troopers? Oh Didn't my we just gosh. watch that the other day? Not or, the other not, day. Well, the other day means relative, it could be like a year. Last ago. five years. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we watched it. I think last year actually. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love that movie. I mean, it's just so great to, to, to become a citizen. You have to join the military. <laughs> I'm right. doing my part. I'm doing my part. I've done my part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We watch these uh, things and I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's where that meme came from. Yep. You know, yeah. like, or, yeah. That's... Oh, Dottie said the people still wearing masks. One of the my friends at work just took oh. off his mask like 
two or three weeks ago and i'm like i forgot what you looked like mm -hmm. The weirdest thing. <laughs> Dave only sees him at work and he's like, you're never going to guess who I saw it today. And I'm like, who'd you see? And then he says, I'm like, he's been there. He's been working there for four years. And he's like, no, but he took off his mask. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> it's like some of them might get the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they're, they're just, uh, they're, you know, there's always been germaphobes before, mm -hmm. but there's also maybe they're taking care of a high risk family member. Yeah. But seriously. There's, I mean, there's, well, there's, another, yeah. there's another possible factor. They could be, sick themselves or recover from sick and maybe don't don't want to spread germs yes. yeah That's there, there was a guy who and, he showed up with one on i'm like what's up with that and he's like anytime i have a sniffles or something i, I put this on I'm and like, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm for that i mean like i've I feel your choice like J japan has kind of always been like that where it was like during flu season everybody was wearing masks and i feel like it's, it was like if they were sick they were wearing it that's yeah. what i thought anyway that's what i don't like to think that. um <laughs> But yeah, I think anything like, you know, if you're going to go to work and you're not feeling well, like cover up, you know, yeah. but it's not, I'm not saying that I just because avoid of COVID. people. Yeah. I'm not saying that because of COVID. I just think it's a nice thing to do, you know, because sometimes people can't call off. They don't have sick days. Mm -hmm. they, they can't, can't afford, afford to yeah. call off, you know, especially in this economy. So, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, but, the, 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 the big thing about COVID for us, you know, for me was that, um, we we have to make the case as libertarians for getting government entirely out of health care. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of the focus was like on Fauci. Fauci bad, Fauci bad, Fauci bad. Well, the implication was that Fauci needed to be fired, which meant he needs to be replaced by somebody good. Mm -hmm. And my argument is that whenever you vest government with power, you have to assume that the worst person is going to exercise yep. that power. It's not mm -hmm. going to be you and your friends. No. Right. And so what we need to do is make the case for the separation of health care in the state, mm -hmm. both at the federal level and the state level, mm -hmm. just like we have separation of church and state. We mm -hmm. don't worry about whether the government's you know, doing bad things with their state churches because the, the government doesn't have state churches, it's not involved <laughs> in running churches. Oh. That's the way health care should be, mm -hmm. that the government has no role in health care at all. So you, you don't have a Centers for Disease Control. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a position for a Fauci. You don't have a FDA. You don't have state regulatory commissions on health care. So you just totally remove yep. this power. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Just like you, we don't worry about the, the government interfering with churches. And the churches well, still exist. My what? body is a temple, so <laughs> I think we can work something there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Healthcare I mean, is a religion. Right, and, then, and, and then the market works everything out. You know, if a restaurant, yep. the, the, the one of the points I kept making during this crisis is that, you know, there was a lot of the anti mask and anti vaccine people, but that's not libertarian. Libertarianism is not anti vax and anti mask. Mm -hmm libertarian any more than it's pro mask or pro vaccine yep. libertarianism just says leave people free to make the choice yep. yeah yep, yep. don't and, tell me and what to do my beef with many of the people in the party or not many some of the people in the party were saying that people who take the vaccine are dupes of the government that they're dumb they're idiots that's 280 million people that we've automatically alienated mm -hmm. i mean Big they're never lot. gonna vote they're yeah. never going to vote. And it's totally unnecessary. You don't have to insult somebody because they make a choice mm -hmm. yeah. that's different from your choice. Just libertarianism is, hey, let the market, if a restaurant wants to have a, a, a mask policy or a business wants to put a vaccine policy, let them do it and let the market ferret it out. They, yeah. they may go out of business and then and let and consumers with, make those choices. Exactly. And that's with anything yeah. over the years, exactly. you know, you've seen with the, the cake Oh, and bake the gay the cake. couple, you know, like it's like, you know, okay, so just let like let's not bring, you know, society like, will correct yeah, it. Yeah, society will correct that. You know what I mean? Like exactly. there will be folks who are like, Yeah, you shouldn't do that, or yeah, that's I I believe in these folks over here, so we're not gonna go over there, you know, like just let it be. But I just feel like ah, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> the you know, government wants to touch it. <laughs> A good example of this is country clubs. You know, country clubs, unlike private businesses, were always free to discriminate on the basis of color, race, religion. So country clubs would not let in Jews, some of them. Some would not let blacks in. And I don't think very many of us would ever condone such a thing, approve such a thing. But that was their right. But what ends up happening is that word gets out and people start ostracizing them. 
They start boycotting them and mm -hmm. say, well, I don't want to be part of your country club anymore. And then so that you nudge people in the right direction. Yeah. They finally say, yeah, maybe we better start letting in Jews. Maybe we ought to start letting in blacks or Catholics or whatever. But that's the way freedom works, where you're nudging people to right behavior rather than using the coercive yeah. apparatus of government to do it. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Like, like guilt them in the line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, well, with that country club thing. Yeah, it's like, not just the country club, but the members too. Oh, I heard you're a member of that country club. Yeah, and then suddenly exactly. the members start dropping out. You, yeah, you straighten up pretty mm -hmm. quick. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I like that. And why? Why not have it be that way? I don't understand. So, like Dave and I were talking the other night about the Nancy Pelosi's and the the folks you know that are like. You know, they made this their whole career kind of deal and government like positions weren't supposed to be that it was, I mean, it's like a volunteer it was supposed thing. to be like, you have a, a job over here, but then like you volunteer your time here to like, you know, I don't know, take care of things and whatnot, but, um, how that they, they, uh, our money goes, tax money goes to pay for all like their houses, their vacations, their cars, their everything. And then it's like. Um, how, I don't know, how can we stop that? <laughs> Cause it's really annoying. <laughs> it's really frustrating, you know, when it's like, oh yeah, you guys are probably eating Kobe. Whatever, well, they, they, yeah, you they know, come, they come in, and... you know, like a normal person and leave a millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, right. How does that, oh yeah. How does that happen? And how do we stop that from happening? <laughs> well, I, I... I think the way you don't stop it is by trying to get better people in public office. I mean, I've heard that, you know, all my life, we just got to get better people. in okay. public office, And then you, you replace them and the, the new person does the exact same thing. Yeah. That what, what we need to do to stop this thing is get rid of all of the illegitimate functions of government and the taxes that support them. So you get rid of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, the entire welfare state program, the, 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 all the diverse programs. You get rid of the national security establishment, the Pentagon, the CIA, the NSA, the vast military industrial complex. <laughs> you could bring all the troops what? home. You don't do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, in other words, you restore government to its minimal functions. Which is which what will, it was supposed to be. Exactly. We start out as a limited government republic with no income tax. I mean, people, a lot of people don't realize that America had no income tax mm. for more than 100 years. Well, that was just a temporary thing, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, what it's, it's I mean, sold as. Yeah. <laughs> we're just, I mean, we're imagine, just a minute. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, you know, uh, living your life without having to file the income tax returns and, and keeping 100% of your earnings. Mm -hmm. So, there wasn't very much money flowing into Washington that they had tariffs and excise taxes, mm -hmm. uh, but th that can't be very much money. Mm -hmm. uh, so at that point, you no longer have need for lobbyists. You know, what are they going to lobby for? Oof. You don't yeah. have the incentive to donate to, ca to campaigns because yep. they can't do good things for you or bad things mm -hmm. to you. Uh, they don't have the money to do it. And so, but when you have this gigantic machinery, this, that's spending, you know, four or five trillion dollars a year. That's a lot of largesse mm -hmm. for for people. So I say, if we if we go into these campaigns as libertarians and get people to ask one simple question, what should be the role of government in a free society? That then I think people start examining that and start dismantling all these programs. You got less incentive now for politicians to make a lot of money they don't have the means to make a lot of money yeah because there's not a lot of money flowing into washington yeah how did it get so bad like how baby steps. when yeah when did it happen was it like a <gasps> like that's where the tipping point or or was it just like so like gradual that nobody noticed <laughs> no that's a fascinating question it really is because if you take my favorite period of time is 1890 to 1910 Okay. Uh, not a perfect libertarian panacea. There were some bad things happening. Jim Crow was starting to get percolating and stuff. But think about it. No income tax, no Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, Federal Reserve, paper money. They had gold coins and silver mm -hmm. coins. No immigration controls, or at least they let in most of the, the immigrants. Uh, no drug war, no national security state, no foreign wars. 
Uh, and it's wow. the most prosperous period ever. Inventions were coming into existence mm -hmm. every day. People were going to from rags to riches in one, two, three generations. The greatest outburst of voluntary charity that mankind had ever seen. The, the rich were building the churches, the museums, the libraries, the opera houses, and no Medicare, no Medicaid. Uh, but the, the progressives start bringing in their socialist ideas. A lot of them were studying in Germany. They were coming back with Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. And so 1913 <laughs> was a critical year. Uh, that was uh, the enactment of the 16th Amendment, which authorized the federal income tax. And then uh, the Federal Reserve was 1913. Mm -hmm. World War I was a disaster. Uh, that, that, that just was a real turning point. And then for the welfare state, it was Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal in the 1930s with the enactment of Social Security. I mean, that was the total transformation, really, to a welfare state. And then in the late 40s after World War II, which was another disaster, uh, we get the national security state, which was actually worse than the welfare state. Uh, so those are the critical points here, and we've lived with it ever since. Massive welfare state, warfare state. Uh, Thirty-four trillion dollars in debt. Mm -hmm. um, the Medicare and Social Security are around sixty to eighty trillion dollars in unfunded liabilities. Mm -hmm. This is not going to end nicely. <laughs> no. Where do you see things going? Uh, if 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 we just stay the course of uh, you know back and forth, Republican Democrat, Republican Democrat. I mean, it just seems to get worse every time. Well, that doesn't um, matter. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> which one wins yeah it it, yeah it, it's it's just gonna continue but like where do you see things you know if something doesn't change that's not good uh if they just keep driving forward with what they're doing the government i mean um i don't know i mean 10 15 20 years i mean or less, you're gonna make that you know <laughs> <laughs> i think i think it's sooner and, it, and i agree with you it's musical chairs it's really one party divided into two wings. It's like the mm -hmm. NFL, one league divided into two conferences, and they just fight over who's going to get the largesse, who's going to get into power. Mm -hmm. to... But it's impossible to say when, but it's not impossible to say that they're headed for a crack up. I mean, th there's, there's no question. You can, you can look at countries like Italy several years ago that they did oh, not man. have enough tax revenues to cover the interest on their debt and their daily expenditures. Mm. Oh, they're, they're huge. Wow. Uh, okay. They, they were broke. <laughs> they were broke. And, and, and they couldn't print the money. You see, that's what was fascinating too, because they were in the Euro system. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The German, German regime would not, or German government would yeah. not let them print the money. And so they got bailed out, but they that's very instructive as to what can happen. The same thing happened with Greece or Argentina. Now let me let me tell you what they did in Argentina because it gives a valuable lesson to what I think they would do here. If they get to a point where they really need the money bad, where it's there's going to be a crack up. Let let's say uh, the the Fed look what the Fed's doing right now that they they were quantitative easing. They were printing money out like it was going going out of style. And then the prices start rising, so they start clamping down. And let's assume that some banks start going under, like they started to do about oh, a year ago. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let, you know, they've got enough money in the FDIC to cover two or three banks. But if there's an industry-wide banking collapse, all of a sudden, they don't have the money to bail everybody out. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got the, the insurance for depositors, I think, now up to $250,000, but if there's an industry-wide banking collapse, where are they going to get that two hundred mm -hmm. and fifty thousand? And and they and they need the money to fund their military machine, their social security payments. Where are they going to get this money? Well, I'll tell you what Argentina did. Uh, they just confiscated everybody's retirement account and, and oh, just no. seized it. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and they replaced it with bonds. You see, which of oh, course is depreciated. Which is as good as money. <laughs> oh, Hang oh, on yeah, to those. Exactly. Look at these, look at these <laughs> IOUs. There's a big one. You're going to want to yeah. hold on to that. And oh, and don't my. don't eliminate the possibility that they do what Roosevelt did back in the 30s. Roosevelt, this was the most one of the most incredible things in U.S. history. That gold and silver coins had been the official money of the of the American people for more than a hundred years. Mm -hmm. We often hear that it was paper money backed by gold. 
That's not true. Yeah, I wanted to, I was, wanted to hear about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was never any paper money in the United States because the Constitution did not authorize paper money. The Constitution authorized the government to coin money. Mm-hmm. Well, coin means gold and silver coins. And they expressly prohibited the states in the Constitution from making anything but gold and silver coins legal tender. So you, you've got this really sound money system for more than 100 years. The, the stock market crash hits in 29 because of the Federal Reserve's monetary antics. They blamed it on free enterprise, but that was nonsense. It was the Federal Reserve. So Roosevelt, in response to this, this crisis, he comes in in 30, 33, I guess, nationalizes gold. I mean, just declares it that the government is now own, the owner of everybody's gold coins. Everybody's ordered to turn in their gold coins. And they were ordered. given paper money. That is, they, they were ordered. given instruments of indebtedness, <laughs> you know, bills, like with dollar bill and Federal Reserve note. You'll see it's, it even says up there, Federal Reserve note. Yeah. Well, because everybody knew that these were notes promising to pay gold, that the, the gold IOUs. was the money and these were instruments of indebtedness. They so were like promissory notes. Yeah. But Roosevelt says, we're now just going to go on a total note standard, but the notes may be promising to pay nothing because we're not <laughs> going to honor the gold. And they they made it a felony offense to old gold coins. They actually indicted a very prominent lawyer in New York City who said, I'm not turning in my gold to mm-hmm. you. It's my gold. And they indicted him and they prosecuted him. <laughs> uh, That's I, I can't, I'm trying to imagine oh what that would be like. Like, Oh, if I could go back, I would love to just go back in time to certain periods and just view what's happening. You know what I mean? Like just to see how some people are reacting to that. You know, some folks rushing in and saying, okay, sure, I'll hand it in. And other folks being like, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I <laughs> no, definitely wouldn't <laughs> advertise the fact that I'm not turning in my gold. But... Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. You're faced with a choice is do you take the chance? Let's say you have it in your home. Do you take the chance of keeping it? Because if they come in, you, let's say you have a fire in your house and the oh. firemen come in. Oh my like, gosh. It's a felony. Do you take that chance with a felony? It's the same way with guns, let's say, mm-hmm. that they don't really have to go out and confiscate your guns. They just All they have to do is make it a felony. And now you've got a choice to make. Do you keep your guns in your house knowing that if you get caught, you're going to go to the penitentiary for 10 years? Oh my gosh. Or, or that, do you that, turn them in? That makes me feel a little less bad about our current generations, you know, rolling over for whatever COVID or anything else yeah. that's going across. Because <laughs> we've done it before, you know. Mm-hmm. We've just accepted the, the tyranny and we've moved on. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's that just boiling like, frog mm, thing. It is, yeah. Go that's how we got here. Yeah. <laughs> that's how we got here is the, the frog and the, the, the pot. Yeah, yeah, you just you turn up the heat gradually. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, but especially in a crisis, you see, they, they use crises mm-hmm. for this purpose. What was the crisis uh, for taking the gold? Was that a... The Great Depression. Okay, okay. And the stock market crash. I mean, you know, people were committing suicide in Wall Street. They had lost yeah. millions. Uh, my, my dad, in fact, told me that his dad had the second largest insurance agency in Texas. And he came home one day and my dad said, and my dad was about 16, and he says his dad... His face was white as a sheet. Oh, I couldn't imagine. And he said, I just sold the business and for practically nothing. Uh, and this was what was going on all across the, the country. I mean, pe- people were committing suicide. They lost their fortunes mm-hmm. and they couldn't, sur- they didn't feel like they could survive without it. And then, you know, the unemployment lines. And so Roosevelt says that the cause of all this is the gold standard. Oh, yeah. And, and the free that. enterprise system. So he blames it on gold. And so the, the government has this huge influx of gold into its coffers that <laughs> enriches the government. Uh, and then as soon as the, everybody got their, their promissory notes, they devalued mm-hmm. the promissory mm-hmm. notes compared to the gold. Oh, yeah. What a racket. Oh, it really is. It, it, oh, it's, my gosh. it really is a racket. And it's a horrific racket, what they did. I mean... It it boggles the mind. It seems yeah. like they're getting bolder and bolder too, because mm-hmm. they're just fleecing us. That's they've been doing it ever since the, the country became prosperous and mm-hmm. people came in and be like, "Oh, we can make some money off this." But it's just so bold right now. They're taking so much of it right now. 
Yeah. They're hitting my, <clears throat> my 401k. They're hitting my dollars in my pockets. I'm, mm-hmm. I can't leave the grocery store without spending $100. Mm-hmm. Oh, because they know that nobody can do anything about it. It's mm-hmm. a one-party system and nobody can do anything about it. And that, that's why I keep telling the Libertarian Party is that it's our job to lead out of this morass. Mm-hmm. We, mm-hmm. I mean, there's only real one solution to get out of this, and that's libertarianism. And so, and if so, if we water down and become Republican lights, what oh. are we doing? Yeah, yeah, we're in extreme Same situation. We yeah, need extreme change. Yeah, this is yeah. this is really uh, oh <laughs> dire. It is dire right now. <laughs> it really is, and it's going to get worse. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think that you're going to see some real uh, the possibility of some real banking collapse here. I don't think this thing is over by a long shot. I oh, know no. the Fed is talking about lowering interest rates soon. Um, and I think that's just because the uh, the elections around the corner. Oh, the oh. way they manipulate things around election time, also, I hate that. you know, it is really frustrating because election year or it, it leading up to it, but isn't every year leading up to another election? <laughs> um, they're just manipulating everything and making people panic and freak out, and and it's it's they're they're the puppeteers, you know. It's so frustrating, and I just. I don't know what to do. I have kids, you know, I mean, I don't want them growing up and well, I don't want everything collapsing around us. Uh, and I want them to grow up and, and have something for themselves. You know, they, my oldest wants to have his own business, you know, like I just, I want better, you know? And I feel like I've gotten to this place where I'm just like, Oh, in the last couple of years where I'm like, Hmm, I, I just, there's nothing I can do about it, you know, so I'm just not going to do anything about it. But now I'm like talking to you and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, let's, <laughs> we got to do something. I mean, there's, we got to do something. Well, I, I really believe, I believe that ideas matter. Ideas have consequences that you can, you start spreading the right ideas and, and it goes from word of mouth, word of mouth, mm-hmm. doesn't rely on propaganda or the mass media or whatever right. that, People hear a sound idea, and that's why I keep saying is that that's what's incumbent on us libertarians to put out sound ideas, mm-hmm. our philosophy. See, I'd be pretty depressed if there wasn't libertarianism, because then I'd say, gosh, <laughs> there's, there's no way out of this. Yeah. We're stuck. But what keeps me going is that I know there's a philosophy that can pull us out of this. Mm-hmm. And but we have to stick with that philosophy. As soon as we start moving in the Republican direction mm-hmm. on anything, monetary policy, Social Security, immigration controls, regulatory reform, drug war, we've lost, and, and we've lost the American people. Mm-hmm. It's our job to lead out of this morass, and and that means sticking with our principles. So that's what keeps me going. I mean, we got a great philosophy here. Uh, yeah. Just imagine how dark it would be if we didn't have that philosophy. Yeah. Right. Yep. That is so true. So uh you okay, so what are you doing right now? Like as far are you you're you said you're going to like conventions and stuff. So how much traveling are you doing? How much time are you spending with the other I see a lot of car videos. Folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, I love driving to these conventions. You know, ever since COVID, I, I discovered my love of long distance road trips. Really? And, uh, yeah, I just oh. love them. I mean, I'd much rather do that than fly. And I hate the TSA crud. And, yeah, he will not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but but driving, I just, you know, when I was a, in high school, I, I mean, when I was a kid, my parents would periodically take us on long distance road trips. And we had a blast, my brothers and sisters and I. And, and a friend in, uh, of mine and I went to California after our junior year in high school and had like three weeks on the road. It was great. Oh, wow. So now I you're... do this and I, I'm sorry. I, oh, I've been God. with my dog. I've gone with my dog to Texas oh, about God. five or six times and she loves the road trips too. And so I was going to say, know, you I've got, take her. <laughs> yeah, I've got no, not on these conventions, but to answer your question, gosh, since February, I've been traveling just about every single weekend. Okay. Um, and this is the first weekend I've had off in ages. It feels like, oh. and sometimes we do two or three. I, I drive to lots of them. Like I drove to Florida and Alabama and, uh, Maine and Massachusetts, New York. I've got audio books to listen to, which is wonderful. You get a lot of reading in by listening. Mm-hmm. I got, ser- I got a free subscription, lifetime subscription to Sirius XM. Oh. Uh, so 
it's it's I really love it. And but to answer your question, it's it's relentless. It's sometimes mm. it's two or three weekends in, in a row. I mean, on the same week, two, two or three conventions in the same weekend. It's a lot. And it's debate, debate, debate. Sometimes it's just oh. a, a talk. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's not easy. I mean, we've all become friends. It's kind of interesting. We developed the camaraderie. Um, now we get on the debate stage, we fight yeah. it out. Yeah, and yeah. As soon as the debate's over, we're all friends. It's, it's, kind of, it's been a kind of a nice little journey here of getting to know the rest of the, the candidates and so forth. But yeah, so I got three more weekends after Easter and then the national conventions in May. Yeah, I was looking, I was looking at the list yeah. of, because I haven't been paying attention, so I just brought up the Libertarian Party pres presidential uh, where's candidates. The, where's the convention? I don't really recognize anybody here. <laughs> Where, where's Except the convention? Uh, is it always in the same place every year? Do they no, do they oh, switch oh, it okay. around. They, they decided to have it in Washington, D.C. this time. Oh, Ew, okay. Don't ask yeah. me why. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yuck. <laughs> exactly. It really is yuck, and it's expensive, too. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, gosh. I, I, didn't, I didn't understand that one. Um, but, but yeah, that, that will be the deciding convention. Okay, and that's in May. What what's the date for that? Gosh, I'm not even sure. It's okay, Dave. I think, can look it up. It's fine. I think it's in the twenties. Okay, May twentieth, something or other. Yeah. So but people are, can go to lp.org if they want to go to my website. It's jacobforliberty.com. Yes, uh, I think Dave put yeah, it in been, the chat. Been, he'll he'll put it in again just so that I've everybody knows. Uh, oh, it's mem uh, Memorial Day weekend. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Right, right. Wow. Right. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's going to be exciting. Uh, so. Um, yeah. 24th or 26th. 24th or 26th. Okay. All right. The Washington Hilton. Um, I have to ask a little bit uh, about the 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 JFK stuff. Oh, you know? we want to get more into that because new stuff was released. Yeah. We were so, I was so excited to hear about it last time. Yeah. And I know... It's probably been years now, but they, didn't they release some new stuff on that? Well, they've released some stuff, but but what's what is more important is that they refuse to re what's what what they refuse oh. to release. Ah, <laughs> yes. interesting. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fascinating because they know that what everybody's saying is it's incriminating, and you would think that they wouldn't want that accusation, but they say no, national security is at stake if we release this sixty-year-old information. And oh so, gosh. get out of here. I, but I think they figure it's better that people think it's incriminor, incriminating rather than see it and realize that it is incriminating. Yeah. yeah. We'll, just, we'll just leave it up to your imagination. Yeah. Yeah. You go ahead. <laughs> think what you want to think. It's probably better. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, imagine, I mean, think how ridiculous it is. Everybody's dead from that era, and they're mm -hmm. saying national security, whatever ridiculous meaning you want to put on that stupid term. How can anything be a je jeopardy to national security that's 60 years old? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's more of a jeopardy to the CIA and the Pentagon. Yeah, their uh, image or whatever, which is already garbage. I mean, we know what they do, mm -hmm. but it's all imagination, but we know. Uh, sorry, I had to turn on the kids' thing here. Uh, yeah, but I guess their position is, like I say, that might as well that have people think it rather than know it. So yeah, we'll keep yeah. the information oh. secret. Oh my gosh, but I feel like, yeah, why? I mean, why not just share it? Because <laughs> <laughs> right there, we don't want to release evidence of us killing the president. Oh, that's, yeah, that, that'd be pretty big. Lies of omission, says Kana, too. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Wow. Uh, all right, so. I, I have a couple things written down because I wanted to ask. If you don't mind, I mean, unless you want to talk more politics, that's fine. You can say whatever you want no, to say. No, 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 no. Um, I, I'd rather stick with JFK, but we can go on. Yeah, tell us more. <laughs> tell me more, more because, yeah, yeah I, I would like to know more I about this, this because uh, I don't know a lot about the conspiracy of it all. Um, so fill me in because we got friends here who right. also want to hear about it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... You know, you often hear that term conspiracy theory and so forth. And, yeah. you know, I was trained as a lawyer. I practiced law for 12 years as a civil and criminal trial attorney. And so I don't think in terms of theories. I think in terms of evidence. Yeah. This is, yeah. Can something be proven beyond a reasonable doubt? And we know that there are conspiracies around Contra, um, 
Watergate, mm -hmm. uh, assassination plots like General Rene Schneider in, in Chile, they conspired to assassinate and so and, and Patrice Lumumba. So when when I started to research this area, I was skeptical and I, and I was intrigued. I'd seen Oliver Stone's movie JFK. And as I read more and more books, I became increasingly convinced that this was a national security state regime assassination regime change assassination mm -hmm. carried out by the Pentagon and the CIA. And it was highly sophisticated, well planned out, uh, framing an innocent man in the process, but I couldn't prove it. You mm -hmm. know, if I had to walk into a court of law there, oh, I knew I there like was it. no way I could prove it. I like that. that like framing of yeah. It. Yep. <laughs> well, then I read a five volume book by a man named Doug Horn called inside the assassination records review board. And Doug had served on the Assassination Records Review Board in the 1990s. That was the board that was called into existence to enforce the JFK Records Act, which was enacted because of Oliver Stone's movie. At the end of Stone's movie, he said they're still keeping their records secret. 30 years after the assassination, the Pentagon, the CIA, the Secret Service, the FBI, the, 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 the House of Representatives. And so... All this public pressure was brought to bear on Congress to get these records released. And that's what the ARRB was designed to do. And so Horn served on that commission. And then 10 years after serving on that commission, he writes this mammoth five volume work. And so I worked my way through this thing. By the end of it, Horn had convinced me beyond a reasonable doubt that this was, in fact, a state sponsored assassination. And wow. what, what was ingenious about Horn is that he didn't focus on what happened in Dealey Plaza. I mean, he, he talks somewhat about that, but the entire focus of the book or the primary focus of the book was on the autopsy yeah. that was conducted on President Kennedy's body by the military. And what had happened was that as soon as President Kennedy was declared dead, the, the Texas state law required an autopsy, which of course determines the cause of death. And the... Dallas County Medical Examiner, a guy named Earl Rose, said, I'm going to conduct an autopsy. And a team of Secret Service agents immediately went into action, headed by a guy named Roy Kellerman, who had been in the passenger seat of the presidential limousine. And had, he had sat there like a bump on the log when the first shot rang out. His job was to jump over the seat and cover the president, mm -hmm. but he didn't. He just sat there waiting for the deadly shot to come in. Oh, wow. Well, Kellerman now heads his Secret Service team at Parkland saying, there's going to be no autopsy conducted here. We're operating under orders. And, and Rose says, you, you're not taking this body out of here. And there's this huge altercation. And they brandish guns. Oh, uh, Kellerman's got wow. a submachine gun he's brandishing. And they, the other guys pull their coat pack, pockets back, their coats back to brandish their pistols. So they force their way out of there. And they take the body to, Parkland, um, to Love Field, where Lyndon Johnson's waiting for it. And Johnson flies it to Andrews Air, Air Base in, in New Jersey, I mean, in um, Maryland, and delivers it into the hands of the military. Well, Horn details in excruciating detail in this, this five volume, the fraud that they committed. Uh, and, and there's no question. I mean, for example, they, they came up with witnesses that established that the body was sneaked into the back of the morgue in a light gray shipping casket when it had been placed in a big, heavy, ornate casket in Dallas. And so when people are sneaking a body in to the morgue early, you know they're up to no good. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there, there's shenanigans about to take place here. And the ARRB discovered this. They, they found a, a guy named Sergeant Roger Boygen, and and they hunted him down and contacted him and he says, oh, yeah, I was, char I was in charge of the Marine detail that carried the body in in a shipping casket at precisely 6.35 p.m. Well, at that moment, the, the Dallas casket was still being taken around to the front of the board with Mrs. Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy in this Navy ambulance. <laughs> so, And that doesn't arrive till 6.55 in front of the morgue. The president's body is already in the morgue at 635, which means that the Dallas case had had to be empty. And so, and this is what, this is what, and then they, they found uh, members of the detail that carried the body in at 635 PM. 
So when you see this type of thing, when I'm reading this with Horn, I said, as a lawyer, I'm sitting there saying, once you establish a fraudulent autopsy, it's over. Because there's no innocent explanation for why you would conduct a fraudulent autopsy. Yeah. Right. And, and that's just one instance. I could give you other instances. Um, but so I wrote a book called The Kennedy Autopsy that became our bestseller at FFF, which is a synopsis, really easy to read. It's a small little book, a synopsis of Horn's book, because I knew that Horn would mm -hmm. never. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are not going to read through five volumes. These are This is a coffee table size five volumes. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, and, very, and sometimes a very difficult read. I mean, Horn has mastered everything, photography. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another example. All, all the doctors in Dallas and the, um, the uh, nurses, uh, the Secret Service agent, Clint Hill, a, jur a, a journalist named Stamps, Tons of witnesses down there in Dallas said that he had a, that Kennedy had a huge wound, like a big blowout wound in the back of his head, which would indicate a shot from the front mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the, the bullet comes in small, but pushing Blows mass out. Yeah. goes out. Yep. So the, the official autopsy photograph shows the back of the head to be intact. So really? something's wrong here. <laughs> Either those doctors in Dallas are wrong. They imagine this wound. Yeah. Or they've got fraudulent photographs. <clears throat> well, yeah. I felt that it was more persuasive that they had fraudulent photographs because when you, that's impossible to mistake these treating physicians. To yeah. Say, like, well, oh, you know, I didn't see that. Well, <laughs> yeah. And the, and the doctors, I mean, they all imagine this massive hole. <laughs> well, the, the ARRB discovers a woman named Sandra Spencer, and she's um, a, a Navy petty officer, was at work uh, on November 22nd, 63, the day of the assassination, or that weekend. So they call her to testify, and she, she says, well, everything was classified. I haven't given my story for 30 years. And they said, well, we're releasing you from that vow. So... <laughs> She proceeds to testify that she was asked to develop the autopsy photographs for President Kennedy's body on the weekend of the assassination on a secret basis. And everybody was sworn to secrecy, by the way, mm. on this autopsy. And they, were, they, they put the fear of God into it, but you will never talk. <laughs> so they show Sandra Spencer the photograph that shows the back of President Kennedy's head to be intact. And she says, no, sir. That's not the photograph I developed. The photograph I developed showed a massive hole in the back of his head. So her testimony, 30 years after, mm -hmm. matched what all the Dallas people had said, that he had this massive hole. So I wrote this little book called The Kennedy Autopsy. It became our bestseller, but it's a synopsis of Horn's book. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Horn wrote a book for us called JFK's War with the National Security Establishment, Why Kennedy Was Assassinated that explains motive that, that Kennedy yeah. was in, in a real war with the Pentagon and the CIA that stretched all the way back to the Bay of Pigs. Uh, but it, after the Cuban missile crisis, Kennedy decided to move America yeah. in a totally different direction. So he goes to American university in June of 63. And he says, effectively says the cold war is over mm -hmm. where I'm pulling the troops out of Vietnam. Well, that's, he issued that order later, but in his peace speech, he said, we're going to make friends with the Soviet union. Then what, what nobody knew is that he was conducting secret person-to-person -person communications with Nikita Khrushchev to say, let's call this thing off and establish peaceful relations with each other. Well, they considered that a grave threat to national security, that Kennedy was naive, he was disarming. Uh, so then <clears throat> and the yeah. final piece of this puzzle was the, the Zabruder film, you see, because the Zabruder film shows the back of Kennedy's head to be intact. So that matches the photographs. <laughs> so if the photographs are fraudulent, that can only mean that the Zabruder film has to be fraudulent or vice versa. If, the, mm -hmm. if they're authentic, then it means that all the Dallas people are wrong. Right. So I wrote a book called An Encounter with Evil, the Abraham Zabruder story, detailing that the Zabruder film is a fraudulent altered copy of the original. Oh, wow. And... Um, it's a, it, that in itself here. is a fact. <laughs> I wrote it as kind of like a detective novel, you know, is that oh, yeah. what is the real mystery here that, I like that. The, yep. the, the, Abraham Zabruder was this Dallas businessman who had gone and taken this film and he 
he had his grand, no, he dies, but his granddaughter decides to write a book on the history, the family's history with the Zabruder film. So I'm reading this book and she says that there's been this taboo in her family for ever since she was a kid. Then this is the granddaughter that nobody could discuss the, the, the Zabruder film in the family. It just was like verboten, and prohibited, but it wasn't a formal taboo or a formal prohibition. It was more like a taboo though, that everybody understood that you don't discuss this. So she decided that she was going to delve into this. Mm -hmm. And this is, I don't know, uh, 40, 50 years, about 40 years after the assassination. And I'm reading this book saying, wow, this is a fascinating revelation here. And, and she, because, you know, this deals with, taboos deal with family secrets, dark secrets, yeah. usually. Somebody's mm -hmm. like covering something up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so she's, but she's going to delve into it. And she's, and she says in her book, I'm very concerned about this. I don't know what the reaction is going to be in the family because I am now going to pierce this taboo. Yeah. So she concludes that there's two reasons for the taboo. That her grandfather, Abraham Zabruder, was very guilt ridden over all the money he had made. His, he made a huge amount of money off, off this 20 sec, seven second, 27 second film. Um, and then um, 26 seconds, I think. And then that he, he felt tremendous grief over the, 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 the loss of President Kennedy and that he had filmed it and all this. So those are the two reasons for the taboo. Well, I'm reading the same this is pure nonsense. I mean, this is pure, this, nobody, no family has a taboo because somebody's making a lot of money. If, if, if they're that guilt ridden, why ask for the money in the first place? Or, and they were, Life Magazine was paying him on an annual basis. He could have just said, <laughs> I forgive the rest of the money. And, and grief stricken, well, there were a lot of people grief stricken mm -hmm. over Kennedy. You don't get a taboo over grief. Yeah. So I decided that I was going to delve into this and, discover the real reason for the taboo. And I, and I am convinced I did. And that's the thrust of my book An encounter with evil. So it's kind of like a mystery story. I build up to what happened here, what really yeah. brought in this taboo. And so that's my most recent book. And I got interviewed on, um, C-SPAN book TV about it. Okay. That was pretty exciting. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But so those Dave's, are the books Dave's I'd recommend. All the links and stuff. Oh yeah. Happy birthday, oh, Russia. Well, the, <laughs> those, those are the books I recommend. My book, <clears throat> The Kennedy Autopsy, and The Kennedy Autopsy Two. I wrote a supplement uh, to it. Uh, then um, Horn's book, JFK's War with the National Security Establishment, which is mm -hmm. an F, another FFF book. Horn's five volume book. But the best place to start for people that want to understand the overall context is a book called JFK and the Unspeakable by James Douglas. That is without a doubt the finest introduction to what happened here that has ever appeared in all of the assassination related books. It, and okay. I think everybody in the research community would agree with that. Douglas's book is deep, it's profound, very easily to read. To read. It, it's the perfect introduction. So I'd oh, start good. there and then go to my book, The Kennedy Autopsy. And if you want to tackle horn's book i would do that now <laughs> a brand new book has just come out uh just in the last three weeks or so called oh, wow. the final analysis by david mantic and jerome corsi mantic is a radiation oncologist who builds on what horn did they're good friends and showing that the x-rays are fraudulent too so you have oh, fraudulent x-rays, fraudulent photographs, and a fraudulent <laughs> film. Yeah. And, well, obviously. And then the, yeah. the other thing I think I should mention is that FFF, the Future of Freedom Foundation, we've had conferences on the JFK assassination, um, which are fantastic conferences. One on the Cold War context of the assassination. Uh, we had Oliver Stone speak uh, there. Oh, we, neat. We, we, we've also, uh, I mean, that was one of the side benefits of my getting into all this. I became friends with Oliver Stone. Yeah. He spoke at two of our <laughs> events. That's rad. Yeah. And uh, th then the second one is, uh, was really a prosecutor's brief a case. I wanted, I wanted to make the case like in a courtroom with all my witnesses. And that's turned, yep. in, in fact, Mantic cites that conference often in his new book. And then Horn, we had Horn do a five or six part series called Altered History that's on our website 
that is our most downloaded series ever. Um, so there's your synopsis that, that there is no question in my mind beyond a reasonable doubt that this was a, a, a national security state regime change operation. No different from the others that they had done. Cuba, mm -hmm. or their attempt to do it in Cuba, Guatemala, Iran, uh, Chile, uh, it's, on, it's, on grounds of national security. Yeah, Ooh. and we see them doing <laughs> regime change elsewhere. Yeah. It's just insane to do it here. Yeah. <laughs> and of course That's they had wild. it They had it well planned and ready and, and all these altered and doctored mm -hmm. things to sell the story. That is That wild. is... Well, remember they take an oath to support and defend the constitution and protect us from all enemies, foreign mm. and domestic. Mm -hmm. Oh, and if, if a president becomes a threat to national security, that's, that's a domestic enemy. And, and the, the real revealing regime change operation in this regard was the one in Chile in 73, uh, from 70 to 73, because they were trying to get the Chilean national security establishment to Al Salvador Allende, the democratically elected president and the, the Chilean general, the overall commander of the Chilean Armed Forces, a guy named Rene Schneider, General Rene Schneider, said, no, this is not our system. The Constitution doesn't provide for a coup. Uh, we're going to wait till the next election. Mm -hmm. And our people said, you don't have that luxury. You have the moral duty to oust your president to protect your country because your country's going down to communism if Allende stays in power up until the next election. Well, that's a very revealing mindset because it reflects their mindset back in 63, that they had a duty, a moral duty to oust a president who they were convinced posed a grave threat to national security and was, whose policies were going to result in a communist takeover, just like in Chile. <laughs> you okay? No, it's yeah. pretty it's, ominous stuff. It is insane. And it reminds me, like, I remember reading somewhere like in the 50s or whatever like like america used to trust the government like mm. they're just like oh they're telling us the truth everything's on the up and up yeah and they're the news <laughs> is telling us what's going on and then i think it was what was it uh something where, where everybody's like wait were, were they lying to us where, where the whole mm -hmm. it was a, a shift a paradigm shift yeah. almost but now people are back to well it's, no nobody trusts it, the government it, but they still they play trust, along yeah it's not that they trust <laughs> the government nowadays i think they're just like to into whatever else it is that they're doing. <laughs> so. Well, the you know, people have to raise families and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. They don't have time to delve into the Kennedy assassination yeah. or yeah. to understanding how the government's operating or what the Federal Reserve is doing. I mean, your priority has to be your family. Mm -hmm. And and they understand that in Washington. I mean, <laughs> but but the the turning point on trust really was the Kennedy assassination because okay. you know, there was that trust when the Warren Commission comes out and gives the magic bullet theory, which was ludicrous. I mean, mm -hmm. here you have this pristine bullet mm -hmm. that supposedly has gone through the back of Kennedy, come out the throat, um, gone through Conley's wrist, broken wrist bone. Uh, no, I mean, through his, uh, through his ribs. It comes in through his back, breaks rib bone, then comes out the front and breaks wrist bone and then lodges in his leg, his thigh, and the bullet's in perfect condition, pristine yeah. condition. Probably still had the but shell casing so and everything on it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, there's no damage at all. And so, but people, you know, scratch. were yeah. expected to believe this, to mm -hmm. fall for this sort of thing. But that was, I think, the start of where people said, my gosh, we're being lied to. And that's huge, because oh, imagine the alternative. <laughs> at that point, you're thinking either this is true mm -hmm. or the alternative that our government assassinated our one of our own presidents, yeah. like that would be just, just it's mind blowing. My, yeah, I mean now well, it's like, oh yeah, can we can totally see it. But back then, <laughs> yes, like what? Yeah, you could get away with a lot of things. Yeah, <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. It it it, it was too big for people to comprehend. Yeah, mm -hmm. the lie mm -hmm. was too big. Yeah. Oh yeah, my gosh. Yeah. 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 Wow. And there, but there were some people. I mean, like there was a lawyer from Philadelphia named Vincent Salandria. Uh, this guy was heroic, and immediately he recognized it as a regime change operation. He started writing about it, 
Oh, and uh, he probably got drugged. I was gonna say did exactly. He... No. <laughs> you can imagine the reaction to, to him. Yeah, right. But Slandry was brilliant, and he would explain mm -hmm. the analysis, and 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 everybody in Europe knew that it was a regime change operation. Oh, it'd oh. probably be a lot easier to see from outside. From, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's it's yeah. it's neat to put yourself in that in that moment and and mm -hmm. try to like how, how would you feel about it? Mm -hmm. This is fishy, but there's no way. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. That's exactly it. There's just no way that this could have happened. Yeah. And 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 there's still people today that feel that way that impossible, just impossible. Yeah. Even though we we have all these instances of I mean we live under an assassination nation. I mean they they do assassinate people. Oh, There's yeah. no question about it. Yeah. And there's uh, Operation Condor, which was a, a South American assassination ring composed of all these right wing military dictatorships. And the CIA was right there as a partner. Oh, yeah. And they, they were kidnapping and assassinating untold numbers of people that they considered communists. Uh, so, yeah, this is what they do. And they're very good at it. They're very good at it. Yeah. Uh, how how did the CIA become a thing? How, where, when, how did that start? When did that, like, yeah. what was, what's their uh, birth story? <laughs> well, the, 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 in story. World War II, which was a transformative event for, for the United States, it starts out with the OSS, uh, which was sort of the intelligence branch okay. of, of, the, of the government with, with uh, World War II. Uh, then this is the beginning of the conversion to the national security state that I talked about. That they started building the Pentagon, I think, in 42. And it's clear if you see the Pentagon, this was not going to be a temporary wartime measure. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Quite a, quite it's a just structure. temporary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this thing's going to last for totally. took an airplane <laughs> right to the side of it. No yeah. Problem. Yeah. I mean, so... They, they, they get the Pentagon and it's clear we're going to have a permanent military establishment because mm -hmm. now as soon as the war is over, they've got a new enemy. And, and yeah. that's how national security states operate. They always need official enemies to oh, keep yeah. people afraid. So from Nazi Germany, we now convert our ally, our World War II ally, mm -hmm. the Soviet Union, into an official enemy. And so mm -hmm. effectively, there's Truman says, well, you just can't rest. You, we can celebrate that we defeated Nazi Germany, but yeah. now we got to... We got a bigger enemy, mm -hmm. and that's the CIA's <laughs> called into existence in 47, which is sort of an outgrowth of the OSS. And then in 52, the third part of this thing is uh, the NSA. And it's really one big military establishment divided into three parts. Mm -hmm. It's not three different agencies. It's, it's sort of like Saudi Arabia or Egypt, this giant military establishment that has different wings to it. Mm -hmm. And those three wings are... <clears throat> the Pentagon, the CIA, and the NSA. Massive transformation of American life. Like I said, it's the worst mistake we've ever made. There's a guy named Michael Glennon, who is professor of law at Tufts University and former counsel to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And uh, I bring that up just so you know that this guy's not your standard crackpot. You know, this right. guy's got credentials. He has written a book called National Security and Double Government. And you read, it's a very readable book. It's not an academic tome. And his thesis is, it's this branch of the government, the Pentagon, the, the CIA, and the, and the NSA that are in charge of the federal government. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. the other three mm -hmm. branches are in support. They yeah. defer to them and they let them think that they're, act like they're in charge. But in fact, especially on foreign policy, it's, it's the national security establishments that's making the calls, like in Ukraine, Syria, and the rest of they're in charge. Oh, yeah, seriously. I mean, if you're in the other branches of government, they can just say, Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Every president has had to factor that in. Ah, yeah. Oh, my and, gosh. Uh, right. <laughs> of course. And, and yeah, uh, they, they, they have to factor in that, that, that you take on these people and you're taking on a very, very powerful part mm -hmm. of the government. Oh, yeah. And then and, and Congress, Congress doesn't dare buck them because they'll say, well, we're going to cancel projects in your state, yeah. in your congressional district. And well, then all of a sudden the press goes, oh, we have an ineffective congressman, you know, and so they they control Congress. In fact, when when Eisenhower gave his farewell address, 
and it referred to the military industrial mm -hmm. complex and the dangers they posed to to America. And that's the shadow uh, government. Yeah. He real the original phrase was military industrial congressional complex. Oh. And he, oh. Yeah. He took out congressional at the last minute. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because they control Congress. I mean, no, no congressman is going to buck these people. No, my gosh, that sucks. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh, it's it's yeah. it's cool and exciting to think about, but terrifying. Yeah, Man. it's like you guys ow. got any cyanide capsules? Maybe you might want to pass out. It's yeah. Oh. I know it is. It's deep, you know. It is. Oh, I'm like having like visions, of like like all the Bourne movies and stuff like mm -hmm. that. They're so fun. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. the Bourne movies? You know. Oh like, yeah. Oh, yeah, those yeah. Are good. Was that the one where he, they, oh, they're like, fantastic. "Are you afraid of the yeah. CIA or whatever?" He's like, "No, it's the NSA." It's like they're oh. the ones that, like. And it's weird because now it's like it feels like we've become we we've accepted that we're being spied on. Like I know they can access my phone. They can do this mm -hmm. or that. It's just, it's. It's a weird world we're living it in. And it's really... terrifying that we're this close. It, like if, if the U.S. government could be the Chinese government, they'd do it tomorrow like mm -hmm. or today. And it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not and and what, what's really pathetic is how many people believe that this is a free society. Yeah. My favorite quote of all the quotes of liberty is Johann Goethe, the, the German thinker. The, the quote goes, None are more hopelessly enslaved mm -hmm. than those who falsely believe they are free. Oh my gosh. It's just, it totally captures the plight of the American people. Yeah. They're yeah. convinced they're free. They're going around singing Lee Greenwood song, you know, mm -hmm. thank God I'm American. Cause at least I know I'm free. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> they're that as close. big yeah. as serfs or slaves that you could ever yeah. find. Yep. It is. It is really wild. Making us debt slaves. And... Made to debt with you. <laughs> yeah. uh, that that's. Uh, I have a really hard time. Yeah, with with that. And like, oh, it's the greatest country in the world. You know, it's like I mean, we live in a nice place. Yeah. yeah you know, like, but we're people say we're free, but it's slipping we're, away. It's, oh boy, <laughs> we're no, more you, free you than some other people, but we are not free free i mean yeah, it's all relative yeah and i i'm i'm grateful that i can practice my religion mm -hmm. right now you know i can in my, even in my own home or go to my church so there are countries that don't allow for that you know whatever um but it's everybody's giving away our freedoms you know like just the government says give me i promise i'll give it back and they don't course obviously yeah mm -hmm. no it's like like the chickens are threatened by a, you know external threat so they go to the fox and say please keep us safe and the fox says i'll be happy to and get right in here in the cage and yep. mm -hmm. i'm gonna close the door just temporarily as soon yep. as the crisis is over i'll open the door again <laughs> promise <laughs> temporarily and then then the chickens start disappearing one at a time. Yeah. They can't figure out why. It's just attacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, nice little fox is taking care of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we're safe. Yeah. Oh, gosh. It is that illusion. Um, I I don't know how much time you have tonight. I don't want to keep you too late. I, <clears throat> my, <clears throat> a lot of our friends have been saying goodnight, too. <laughs> um <laughs> I, I want to ask you a few questions off topic of this kind of uh, stuff, if that's okay. That's yep, yep. If, if you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you watched the new Dexter? Was there a new Dexter? There's a new Dexter out. Yeah. How and I new? Know, um, I feel like, it, I, I don't know, but it shows up on my thing. I know you guys talked thing. about that yeah. last time. I don't know if it's, if it is out or if. Maybe it hasn't come out yet, but I know that there is more Dexter to come uh, I remember. after the last one. And I, I did not watch anything new, but we did talk about Dexter last time. Um, the whole series, the whole original series was fantastic. I, the ending kind of bothered me. Um, Would be new Blood. Dexter, New oh, Blood. Oh, that came out in 2021. Okay, so there's a new season. Yeah. I did not see New Blood. Did you watch okay, that well one? I did. Did I you? Did. No yeah, spoilers, but what did you think? I loved it. Really? I absolutely loved it. Just oh, yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I will watch it. I highly recommend it. <laughs> so really? It. Because I, I, I didn't loved, get into it, but I loved Dexter so much. Yeah. Um, well, I'll say it's not as good as the Dexter, the sure, original Dexter. Sure, nothing, nothing. But it's it's fun. It's worth watching. Okay, worth the time. All right, okay. Um, no spoilers for any of people who didn't haven't seen it, but um, Ozark ending. How do you feel? How did you did you finish Ozark? Because we talked about loving Ozark. <laughs> uh, how did you feel about how it concluded? I loved it. I'm trying to remember how it ended, but uh, all I remember is that I loved it. Good, uh, yes. Do you have any <clears throat> memory triggers? There was because uh, I didn't watch that one either. These are yeah. These are your guys. Just like a, you know, <laughs> oh, no. the, Ozark the... was fantastic. I think my my <laughs> very favorite of show. all of them though was uh, Breaking Bad, and and then uh, um, this what was the prequel? The, the uh, better was better it Better Call, call Saul? Saul? Yeah. Like, better Call or, Saul. Oh, oh yes. Okay. Now, did you watch? Did the, they make the movie El did Torino you, or something? Not El. No, was it El Camino? El Camino. Did El Camino. you watch it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, see? Okay, now we did not finish Better Call Saul. We already talked about this. Because <laughs> I don't finish Dave things. Dave doesn't finish. We watch, you know, like nine out of ten, and then he's just like, mm, I'm done. I'm like, how can you go all the way know. and not finish I know. Yeah. I know. That's what things, I want to it, it just yeah. didn't, I don't know. It's me. I mean, this how guy's can... a genius. Just yeah. a genius. I mean, when he when he finished Bre Better Call Saul, it's the only ending I've ever seen that wrapped up everything. Oh, yes. Uh, all the loose ends. All I, mean, I it, love all the loose ends being tied up. Yeah. Have you have you binge watched any shows in the last couple of years that you feel are like I need to tell people they should watch this? I haven't. I haven't come across any good ones since I think Better Call Saul. Um, my very worst one was Lost. Did y'all say Lost? Oh, oh yeah. Gosh. Oh, that's going way back. But <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so tell us about what you don't like about Lost because there was it a was lot the of end. Yeah, the I end. They know. built this whole thing, oh and then this it was because ending. everybody knew how it was going to end, and they're like, "That's not how it's going to end," because they're not going to say, yeah. "Oh, you guys figured it out." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I had wasted. Two years of my life. Oh or my something. gosh! I mean, it was a fun show. It was a fun show. Oh yeah. And we we watched it when it was like on Hulu with limited well, advertising. <laughs> it was still on TV, like oh. when I actually watched oh, like okay. television. Know you know, like with I would. You were working second shift, and I would watch it, and then I'm like. Dave, we need to find some way so for insane. you to catch up. It was so insane. Smoke monsters and polar Yeah, bears. so we started watching <laughs> it on Hulu together. And I loved it, but the ending—I feel like the ending just. Oh, it was horrible! It just—it was just total waste of time. I yeah. was so because it was it, I didn't... it had such a great oh. theme to it. I know the whole show. I feel like the whole thing for me was like I'm, I loved it, but then. The I ending, do have I'm a like... new. I do have a new one. I haven't finished it. I just started it last oh. night, but oh. I got two recommendations for this. Yes, the four-part series. Coincidentally, on the same day, I had two emails saying, "Hey, you got to watch this series." Oh, okay. and, and I'm gone. I've gone through one and a half parts. We're gonna write it, it down. Really good. Called the uh, Octopus Murders. Oh, really? Yeah. Let me make sure that's it. Okay. But it I'm looks sure. really, really. It's a documentary. Yeah. Um, and um, it looks really, really good. How do you involve uh, an octopus in a murder? That's that sounds fascinating. <laughs> the Yellowstone prequel. Okay. Yeah, I heard Yellowstone's yeah. good. I'm interested in that. Yeah. Westerns are rad, man. I feel like that's, I would love to be back there. I mean, I'd probably get murdered, but you know, it would still be so much fun. <laughs> you would get murdered. And everybody yeah. would smell, but that's okay. You know, the whole toilet thing and no, no like bathing. shower, like, like we have now. That's, I want to go back in time and, and live in places, but like, yeah, just look at it not actually live it because that's why i say we need to figure out that fourth dimension where you can travel through the time fourth dimension. Yeah, octopus murders <laughs> okay. octopus murders do okay. you know what platform you can just netflix it. be... oh okay we got okay that. oh my uh, there are it looks so... really really good and, yeah uh, yeah this starts out with this reporter <gasps> oh, who who's nerd. investigating oh. something called in's law which is a real case where the justice department okay was and they find him dead in a bathtub, and they declare it a suicide. 
mm. and do an embalming and then contact his family. And they, they find like eight cuts across his wrist on one side and four or five cuts the, on the other side deep. And of course his family saying nobody commits suicide like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and so they go into investigating what he was investigating. He was a, like an investigative journalist and he was oh, investigating yeah. okay. the justice department. Of course. And that's, <laughs> that's where it is right now. It's, it, it looks really good. Oh man. And it's a true story. Oh yeah. Just, yeah. Just less than four hours. <clears throat> when stuff is based on, true stories it's like <laughs> but you also have to take that with a grain of salt but based they like they'll they'll do a lot sure, of sure sure but uh, yeah that sounds fascinating have yeah. you watched have you watched the series fargo i remember the no. movie. i watched I the, watch movie. the series. Now, yeah I, the movie i watched i love the movie yeah <laughs> there, watching the series. there's a series on hulu um I need to watch it closer together. I go in like spurts, you know, and I, I don't, I think I'm on the last season, but it is also fascinating based on true, based on a true story, obviously. Those but, Minnesota um, accents. <clears throat> yeah, it really, oh, wow. It, uh, well, that's did a good one. Did, did y'all see Narcos? Yeah. <gasps> yes. That was fun. Yes. It's fantastic. And then Narcos Mexico? I did not. Yeah, start that there. one it's I, just as good it's is just it? fantastic yeah very, oh. very good now have you watched queen of the south no what is that well i watched the spanish version la oh. reina del sur oh, and okay. uh it's a it's fictionalized account do you know who kate del castillo is she's a famous mexican actress I pro oh, if i so. saw her i bet you i would yeah because i have well, watched yeah. shows uh, and I'm like, very, okay, subtitles. <laughs> yeah, you might, if you see her, she was El Chapo. You know El Chapo, right? Yeah. Uh, that drug dealer. She was his, supposedly his girlfriend. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay. Uh, but she knew the guy. But it's just a, well, I saw it as a Spanish soap opera, just to keep my Spanish up to snuff. And But it was so popular in Mexico that they made it an English version called the The Queen of the South. And my niece watched it and loved it. So, really? Queen yeah. of South. Now, the okay. Spanish version was like 98 episodes or something yeah. like wow, that. Wow, wow. I don't know if Queen of the South has the same number, but I love that one, so you might want to check that out. I'm gonna, oh, yeah, yeah, it went from you... 2016 to 2021, so it's got to be a few. Okay, yep. I'm going to find it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really fascinating to see how the drug war has spawned all these these movies and series mm -hmm. and stuff glamorizing she's she's a drug dealer oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and it glamorizes her glamorizing <laughs> it yeah oh my gosh uh, <laughs> i i i haven't thought of narcos in a little while that was a that was a really good yeah um, i can actually remember that yeah, <clears throat> yeah. lots of good well, memes to spawn from <laughs> yeah. Well, it really is an indictment of the drug war because every time they knock out a cartel, they get all this publicity and, and oh, the, look, mm -hmm. we, we knock. But it's replaced by the competitor. The Hydra. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And then Narcos Mexico, you'd love it because it, it's based on that real true case of, uh, uh, forget the, the narc, the narc guy. Um, oh, can't forget. I uh, can't remember his name. Um, but an American narc is, is in Monterey and they kidnap and torture the heck out of this guy. Mm, that's and um, the story is, you know, what happens and how they uncover this and what the DEA does to retaliate. And, oh, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Kiki Camarena was his name. And, and I remember I was practicing law on the border at the, that, that time and I was oh, handling wow. drug cases. And this guy when they kidnapped him, boy, it was, it was bad news. And when they found his body, it was clear he had been tortured really bad because he, he had uh, uncovered this massive marijuana field. I mean, like tens of thousands of acres of marijuana and he wow. busted it. And that didn't go over very well with the cartel. No, oh, like sure. That. Yeah. Oh, it, it so is... I recommend that one too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, you wrote that down. I'm going to write this down, even though it's on our screen here. But the, oh, uh, it looks like on the USA Network or something. Queen of the South. Did you watch Suits? Did you watch Suits? No, no. 
People were recommending it. I started I watching. I it's just okay. couldn't get into it. I know because I I feel like the things that you're sharing here that wouldn't be one that you would get into. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was good though. I feel like I mean for me anyway. I get into a lot of. I also uh, watch Firefly Lane Girls and you know <laughs> like <laughs> Virgin River. So I watch a lot of different things. Um, but I, oh man, uh, I'm excited about these ones. Yeah. And so I don't Virgin, what's Virgin river. Virgin river is a, uh, it's a Netflix series <sighs> about, uh, a, a woman and she's like, uh, she's a midwife and she, so her backstory you'll learn if you watch it, but, uh, she moves to a tiny town after her husband dies in a car crash and then. Uh, you know, there's the whole like romance kind of thing and whatever. I don't know. It's very comforting to me. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's very peaceful and like cute and they have drama. That's enough that I can handle because I don't like drama. Um, <laughs> so it's like enough that I'm like, okay, it keeps me interested, but not turning it off. Um, but it's, it, I don't know. There's something yeah. calming about it. I really like it. I don't know why. <laughs> it's weird. Okay, You're watching well, shows then, that then I don't even know about. <laughs> I got a movie recommendation for you. Oh, okay. It's on Netflix. And this is just a movie. And it, it's kind of, you know, campy, but I really like it. It's called The Secret Dare to Dream. Oh, I And I um, it, it's a romance uh, oh. uh, movie, but it's this, it's the notion that, you know, you think positive and your mm -hmm. life will be better for it. Oh, yes. And, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I love it I like already. The, I'm seeing. Yep. Yeah, okay. Writing it down. <laughs> my birthday's yeah, coming it, up, so I get to pick the movie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's uh, what's her name? Um, Tom Katie Cruise's Holmes. former wife. Yeah. Katie. Katie yeah. Holmes. And then some guy named Josh something or other. Josh Lucas. His last name. Yeah. He looks. Jo familiar. Josh who? Lucas. Lucas. Yeah. He looks familiar to me. Like I've seen him in other things, but I can't place him in other things. Yeah. That's, that's, it, that's, it's kind. It's kind of syrupy, but I love it. I mean, because it's think right. positive and things will. So Mary's into it. I'll give it a chance because I'm going to have to. Yeah. <laughs> Don't blame me. You know what, though? I watch Dave's movies. He picks. Oh, I pick he, some weird stuff. <laughs> he likes horror movies. So I like I like 80s camp, campy horror movies. Horror, yeah. So like we'll watch but like also comedy terrifying stuff like things. that. But, but he, then, oh, I don't know. Sometimes he picks some really weird stuff and I'm like. Not my favorite, but I'll watch it with you because I love you. And, and you like then, spending time with me. And I, I want to spend language. time. Yeah. So uh, that Invasion is Invasion my... of the Body Snatchers. Oh, what was the what, the last one we watched? was the, know, the Killer was Clowns from Outer Space. Really or weird. That was, we couldn't even finish yeah. it. <laughs> but did you see Invasion of the Body Snatchers? I think I did. I feel like I did. Like when I was younger. I the think 50s was... version or the... Updated mm. version, the Donald Sutherland version. I'm I'm gonna guess it's the updated one. Okay. Which was probably still like you know eighties, nineties or something. When Yeah, yeah. What are some of your favorite movies from like you know I mean I know when I was a kid, Goonies was like my I'm favorite movie, agree. you know, like <laughs> that was what, the eighties, right? Yeah, yeah. Um what Goonies what are some of the goat. some of your favorite movies uh, over the years that you're just like, Oh, that takes me back to this time or what you know my whatever. favorite movie of all time i just watched it two nights ago since it was easter week oh yeah. the ten commandments <gasps> oh wow oh my gosh that would be on tv I, I don't have, think i have it would be on it'd be on the tv <laughs> it <laughs> have would. you ever seen it i have watched it yes but with commercials oh, you know like that, the, it would that, be broken up and stuff but yeah that well yeah and i rented it on net on on amazon prime and there were no commercials but mm -hmm. that parting of the red sea it just still still astounds me how they I know. did that i know it's we like, really oh should watch God. that with the kids the 10 uh it is yeah. it is i remember my is dad it? being like we're gonna watch this i'm like okie dokie <laughs> oh, it's such a powerful movie this it is really and yeah. I, I love the great escape Do you, have you ever seen the great escape with steve mcqueen that sounds familiar. No, I don't think I have. Oh, that's a great movie. Just great movie. And McQueen was a race car driver. I don't know if y'all knew that or not. You know, you know who Steve McQueen is, right? It sounds familiar. Okay. I, I only well, McQueen, know Lightning, Lightning, I know McQueen, Lightning came from. McQueen from Cars <laughs> okay. because my kids, well, you know. like <laughs> Steve McQueen was the biggest ladies man. I mean, he was the heartthrob back when I was, I guess, in the 60s. 63. And... Uh, 
in real life, he was a race car driver and a motorcycle rider. And wow. in fact, I think wow. he got into the motorcycle hall of fame or something. So in this movie, the great escape, which is about a true story of uh, American oh, prisoners camp. of war. Yeah. Yeah. They're in oh, a wow. prisoner of war camp and they escape and he does all his own motorcycle riding in the, in the movie. Um, and except one, he, he he jumps over a fence with his motorcycle, and they did the they had the stunt guy do that one. But mm-hmm. McQueen was a stout guy. I mean, just stout guy. So, I, if you want a fun movie, I recommend that. A bullet too. The guy just wrote down oh, the bullet. Oh yeah, filth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the great, great chase scene. I think it's in San Francisco. You know what? I'm gonna bullet. I'm gonna add these to our our movie wheel. Every yeah. week we watch a movie together. Sunday night we watch movies with our friends. Um, All right. There's also another war movie uh, with, um, oh gosh, what is it? Um, it's the one where they're going to go, uh, 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 b- they're going to blow up a German general's conference or something. Uh, oh gosh, what's the name of it? But a bunch of famous people in there. I can't remember this. And then there's another one with Donald Sutherland where they're going to go find gold. Ah. Uh, I can't remember the titles. I'll, that's I'll see okay. if they come to me. Uh, see, that's, yeah, message that's... us when they when they pop in your head. Anytime yeah, yeah, someone me. says like, uh, "Oh, hey Mary, what's yeah. your favorite song or this or that?" You, you know, I'm like, yeah. I don't, "What's music? <laughs> exactly. I don't even know." <laughs> but like, like with our movie night, we usually do like older movies that you might not watch. Like, whoever hasn't seen it yet might not go and watch mm-hmm. it so we just oh, we just watch it together it's so much fun yeah and yeah. so like kelly's basically Force, you're, you're... Saying, or kelly's heroes sorry kelly's, kelly's heroes. heroes i am yes, oh, there it is. yes kelly's heroes oh it's fantastic absolutely fantastic and, and there's there's a great scene in there where bastards was good. this guy is saying um that they're they're gonna they're trying to cross a bridge this is in world war ii and, uh, and american soldiers are trying to get to the secret stash of gold and and uh, they're gonna they're looking to cross a bridge, and this guy tells Moriarty, I mean, tells Donald Sutherland, his name is Moriarty. I don't think that the, the bridge is gonna be there. I don't think the bridge is gonna be. There. And Donald Sutherland says, "There you go again, Moriarty, sending out those negative waves." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they they get up to the river and the the. the the, the bridge blows up and goes, see Moriarty, you sent out those negative waves. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You, oh. you got to watch Kelly's Heroes. You will hey, absolutely love it. Our Google turned our, our lights off. Oh. She, tur- she turns our, our lights off at 11 we, o'clock. We, we had to set like guidelines for ourselves because we were staying up too late. Mm-hmm. So we have like lights turning <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the the dirty dozen. Filth pig says dirty, the dirty dozen. dozen. There you go. Oh, okay. I was gonna look that up. Yeah, good job, that down. Boy, yeah. man. You guys, <laughs> oh, dirty dozen. You gotta watch. Fantastic right. movie. So, yeah, because like I was saying, we 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 introduce these older movies to the newer generations that follow mm-hmm. us and hang out with us, our friends on 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 these platforms, and they watch yes, the movies right. with us. <laughs> so it's nice to have like movies that are being introduced to us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh well, my gosh. I'd be interested to know what your your reaction is to the end of the Dirty Dozen because you you'll love the movie all the way up to the I very end. But when I saw the end, it was like, oh my gosh, I don't believe they're going to do that. Really? And, oh, I'm excited. Yeah, I, I, and every time I watch it, I'm still troubled by what they did. And oh so, uh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. Uh, you just, I'd be interested to see what you guys think of the end. Well, it's I a little am... disconcerting. <laughs> I, I I'm excited, nervous now, is that, but excited. Is that as a, a normal viewer or as a libertarian viewer? Uh, as a libertarian, I think. Yeah, because yeah. we talked about that how libertarianism like ruins a lot of oh, things for you. Oh my gosh! Okay, so we <laughs> used to back in our status days used to love watching Law and Order. You know, and all the cop oh, movies. Oh yeah, all the cop movies and everything. And now I'm just like, ouch! Oh yucky! Gross. <laughs> yeah, get it away from me. <laughs> yeah, dragnet. It's, yeah, it's not the same, you know? It's not the same at all. Uh oh, I am excited. I thank you for sharing that because oh, you're welcome. there's I hope so it works. much out there that I have not mm-hmm. seen. Uh like we've say with <laughs> movies and video games, mm-hmm. just because they're old doesn't mean they're not good. Right. They're just pushing the new That's thing. True. On you. They're yeah. pushing the newest. Yeah. Uh, Are you guys a fan of Galaga? I, I've heard of the video game. 
I that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was oh it. yeah. <laughs> still fun. Still fun. I will play it. <laughs> like I remember a time when you play a video game and you turn it off and that was it. You couldn't go back into it. You had to start over. Oh boy. Everything's saved. <laughs> I, I became a pro at Galaga. <laughs> what is it uh, like? This what is back it... in? What, what is... is that where you're flying around and shooting at the aliens and the? What is Galaga? You're oh. shooting at oh, the spaceships and and the oh. little dragon. Little animals and okay. stuff. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, and those are right. hard games. Like I've I've tried to go. Oh, yeah. I've gotten emulators for Atari and Nintendo, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you go back and play these games and like. Oh, arcade games. Yeah, oh, they're yeah. they are difficult. But it, but back difficult. in that day, you had three games and you played yeah. those games. That's all you played. What happened yeah. to arcades <laughs> too? You know, like arcades. It's like you you go to an arcade now and it's like this big huge bright like a Dave lit, and Buster's. Like, yeah like and and it's it's not like it used to be where you could just go to the arcade take your dark. quarters you yeah. know yeah and just there was CD. like <laughs> like 60 games set up and you know you just go play the your good games. old days yeah <laughs> yeah everything gotta, now is attached to something else and it's like eh, I don't like it <laughs> I've got a 10 year old nephew and we were in Dallas recently and we went to an arcade and uh so we go in and lo and behold, they have a Galaga game there. <laughs> oh so my I gosh. said, oh, I wonder what this is like, uh, David, you know, let's try this. I was hoping to make some money off of it. I was going to say, you're hustling you know. him. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and he was impressed because I haven't played Galaga in oh, no, over a decade. But like man, Ryan I could wipe him out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Give me your lunch money, kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they would have it. You could put your initials up there. And I remember they had one at a 7-Eleven where I lived in Dallas. This is in the oh, 80s. And, man. And so it was the biggest thing to get my initials up oh, there. Yeah. The oh, yeah. Score. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That was. It was huge. Yeah. You get to put your your three letters in there. Whatever exactly. letters Joey would go to the gas station. Wanted. They'd have something there. Get your names in there. Right. And obviously you're going to put something obscene as your yeah. three letters. Well, I mean, not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Do you feel like life was simpler back then? I look back at the 80s. I think we just didn't know what and, was going on. You know, the 90s. Uh, and I just think like, oh, man, it was just so simple. Uh, but now we have all of this other extra stuff and people Social I feel are, are more busy. Do you feel like life was simpler or is it just me being weird? Because we're kids. No, I, I think you're right. I think things do feel simpler back there, but I don't know whether that's just a product. Maybe at that time it didn't seem simple, but in terms of liberty, I mean, there is no question that, that we're worse off than we've ever oh, been. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, things have gotten worse and worse and worse every year and every decade. It's quite amazing. Uh, We're getting so much further away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From that line, you know, it's like yeah. so far. How do we get back to it? Yeah, yeah. And, and so what you try to do is you try to carve out a nice life in the midst of this unfree life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harry Brown uh, once wrote a book called "How I Fa- How to Find Freedom in an Unfree World." where he says, okay, you know, we live under this kind of serfdom society. How can I best protect myself from it? How can I carve out a happy life in the midst of all this? And I think that was a profound thought. Is it, how do you, how do you do that? How do you find happiness in what is clearly a serf society? Yeah. uh, Where they're controlling us, they're spying on us, they're regulating us, they're plundering and looting us. And, but still, I, I think you can find happiness you know, because that happiness comes from within. Yeah. That's it's your true. perspective. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And like you said, you're like, you wake up and you're excited to go to work and because purpose, you know, I, you yeah. have, you oh, feel yeah. driven to do what it is that you are doing. Uh, and I think that too. Yeah. So everybody find, yeah. find some kind of purpose you know, in your day-to-day life that. So do you, do you guys do this full time or do you have regular jobs? Or... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I have a regular job. She's a, she's a homemaker. 
I stay home with the so kids I was blessed and homeschool. With a job where I could oh, provide. that means you don't work at all then. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. I definitely, uh, I, I don't do anything. I, I eat bonbons and watch soap operas. <laughs> God, that's what housewives did in the 50s. <laughs> yeah. There's no soap operas on anymore, I don't think, but I, I, I You, you binge Netflix shows. Yeah. I, I, uh, but it, it is, it, it is tough coming, like. We're, she she homeschools too. Homeschools, so. Yeah. so um, oh, three kids. Wow. Yeah, it's so grown. she has three kids home yeah. all day, every day, and I come home and I say thank you for not going insane because I spend you know six hours with them or whatever, and I'm like, this is intense. <laughs> this is a little intense. <laughs> yeah, my my mother had my youngest brother when she was forty, Ooh. and she used mm. to say that when he got his driver's license at sixteen, she went on a week long drunken celebration. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I mean, she was doing the Cub Scouts when she was in her forties. Oh yeah. yeah, with That's all the twenty years, she's looking at retirement. <laughs> uh, How yeah, old are your kids? Levels. Um, well, fourteen. Okay, so we we the, started a little late too. We started a little late. Yeah, the boys are about to have birthdays in May, so fourteen, soon to be fifteen, ten, soon to be eleven. And then Jane is nine and a half because she'll be 10 in October. So, oh, you, yeah, you got your hands full and then you got two in college at the same time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know what? And we talk about this a lot. College. Is it actually for everyone? Yeah, we kind of lean on trade. Uh, I, and if my kids want to go to college, that's fine. But yeah. I feel like when I was in high school, it was... Uh, I graduated in 98 and, uh, it was, uh, figure out where you want to go to school because that's what you Your have college. to do. Your, where do you want to go to college? That's because if you don't, you're either going to be, uh, like a druggie or you're going to be <laughs> flipping burgers for the rest of your life, you know? Um, yeah. and so I feel like, uh, now it's more like, okay, sure. Yes. College is for some people, but it is not for everyone and we shouldn't be pushing it on everyone. Um, so there's trade schools, you can apprentice. There's things that people, uh, who turn 18 can do, um, besides just going straight into debt, <laughs> uh, for something they might not use now, doctor, lawyer, you know, counselor, therapist, that kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, if you feel really driven to do something, yes. But, um, if you're not sure, don't just, and if you're not sure, don't That's just a good point. go, you like, don't just go in, right. you know, like, um, uh, I took a year off. I went to a trade school after, um, so I still have, I mean, I, ha no one can take that from me, you know, that knowledge just because I'm at home now with my children, all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't have that ginormous debt of four years at a university for who knows what you want to do at 18 university. at 18. You're so oh, young, yeah. you know, your brain. I love those words. Like, yeah. yeah. You can't get a tattoo, but you can, uh, you can go $200,000 in debt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well right. now, I mean, you can't even buy a pack of cigarettes till you're 21, which, okay, fine. But, Still, like you can go to war, you can go get <laughs> murdered yeah. in another country. Uh, sorry, well, I'm going off here. Let me, <laughs> no, let, let me give you some advice based on what I've seen with my two brothers and, and their daughters. Work on your daughter not to ever want to get married because you got to pay for that wedding. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. <laughs> What is it? The, the, the boy just has to pay for the bar tab. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so. And, and the, uh, the rehearsal dinner, too. The boy, I think, pays for the rehearsal oh, okay. dinner. But, but that can be pretty cheap because you can have that at a barbecue joint. Oh, man, Connor has oh, three yeah. daughters. Three daughters? Oh, boy. Um, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's hopeless. Yeah. It's like a dowry. So so uh, <laughs> it's funny because we're talking about uh, ancient Greece right now with the kids like, and what it was like. So the, the boys excuse me, in ancient Greece would go, if they had money, they could go off to school. Otherwise they'd just be working out, you know, with the family, but the girl stayed in the home. Um, but you could also just leave your kid out to die. Like if you didn't <laughs> want your child, you could just be like, 
you know, it's a girl. She's going to end up costing us money because you know why she would leave. There would be a dowry and the boys would stay no dowry, but they would also take care of you in old age oh. because they would still be there. They wouldn't have, you know what I mean? So, uh, but yes, That's I understand. And Dave and I, though, we had such a tiny wedding. It was so yeah, great. We were, I loved we were good it. kids. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to spend hundreds or tens of thousands of dollars on a wedding. That's really smart. Yeah. Was, <laughs> my, my youngest niece who just got married, I was trying to tell her, takes the money because my brother was willing yeah. to offer the money. I said, take the money. Yes. Oh, yeah. Your oh, down payment. my gosh. But, no, she didn't Maybe take my advice. You got to be might ready. Be yeah, be another societal thing. Yeah, we need to change like, that little girl's uh, dreaming of a princess wedding. Yeah, they're like, I have <laughs> exactly. to be this way, and, the, and it has to be, and it's like one day, and sure. No, put that on the house. Like you, yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. But you're gonna look back, and and you, I don't know, I don't know that you're gonna think you made the right choice. <laughs> Having you know, hundred thousand dollar wedding, local restaurant yeah. or whatever. Being in debt. Yeah. Like yeah, that, debt is I don't worse. know. I, I try to drill that into my kids. Like, if you're you, the debtor is the slave. Oh, they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah they know because yep. even when it, like our kids, I feel so bad because like it comes to like birthday or Christmas, and they're like, "Am I asking for too much? I don't yeah, want it to do cost that. too much." And I'm like, "Don't, I'll just tell me what you want. If it's too much, I'm not going to get it for you." <laughs> but they think about that. They they don't they, they worry about the family head. finances yeah, like, as a ten year old. Yeah. They're concerned with the family finances, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Yeah, I'm like, don't worry. That it really is good. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I've had so much fun. Are you? Are you in? I have to ask about the eclipse. It's happening. The 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 great eclipse. It's really is big coming. here because we're in totality. We are in the line of totality where we live. Are you aware that there's going to be a fantastic solar eclipse? On April eighth, or is this just regional? Okay. No, no, it's no going idea. across the country. It's going. It's he not, doesn't know anything about it. So okay, so for us, it's a but huge I haven't been deal. reading the paper lately. Yeah. Either, okay, for it's, us, it's a huge deal. Yeah, because we're in the line of totality, and our whole city is going to be taken over by where are you? People. We're in northwest, northwest Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yep, okay. right on the Great Lake there. So yep. it's like coming up across the country. So it's coming right through our neighborhood, mm -hmm. and our hotels so are going to be a total eclipse. Where yeah. Everything? Yeah. Like for where we are, yeah. yeah. Like yep. once in a life, well, once every, what is it, 25 so, years or something? Well, lots of years, but wow. oh my gosh, I'm so excited. But yeah, we're getting all these warnings, like make sure your gas tank's full, mm -hmm. make sure you have food, <laughs> like 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 something's coming up. But I, I can understand it because we're going to have a lot of Eclipse tours mm -hmm. coming in. Like the hotels are like $1,000 a night in our area for that, that day or a couple days. It's pretty wild here. So, but what are they predicting? Something bad might happen, or something? I think it's well, just because we'll have so many people here that they'll have extra oh, okay. tourists. They'll clean yeah. out the okay. the grocery stores. They'll I jack gotcha. up the gas prices. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the normal stuff like like if there was a storm. You know, yeah, like people right, call it right. price gouging, but <laughs> it's not one of those. What was that thing where the all the computers were going to go down? There is oh! a lot of conspiracy. Oh, oh. Like people are like like they're firing up CERN, like whatever that that. Uh, collider oh, the thing, thing. Yeah. Like they're gonna, and then NASA is going to fire rockets or something there's because uh, we, we follow like a lot of conspiracy groups but it's like there's a lot of weird things going on around the time but I think it's mostly just because there's going to be a lot of people flooding a lot our of market extra traffic in our town yeah they're close like the schools like and also I mean this is going to be a total eclipse it's going to be dark that's amazing yeah, yeah. and yeah. so like let everybody see it not be stuck in traffic like driving home it's I'm happening trying to get out of work. At, <laughs> it's happening at three o'clock when so school will, there, let will we have any of that here in Virginia uh you could partial it should be partial though. partial we had partial uh in 2017 and ever since then i was like oh my gosh like 2024 yeah, cause you're is saying, our year you, i like, don't remember been, it like, but you're like i, I, I started pumped. hearing crickets chirping like mm -hmm. during the day and it, they say that like it's like, amazing the it's, animals kind of freak out it's, a, it's like amazing that this is gonna and happen how long does it last about the whole the total blackout part is gonna be about four minutes but there's going to okay. be the hole where like the sun's cover or the moon's covering part of the sun 
for a while and then total and then going it's like an hour long. Yeah. So the whole thing is gonna be so a does couple it turn hours. Darkish? When it will turn dark, like it will nighttime. turn nighttime here where we are. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, is it starting to cover up the sun? Does, it get, does, yeah, things... yeah, it does start wow. to get darkish. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. I wow. am now, you're I not am... supposed to look at it, you know. No, you well, need we the... got a lot of friends saying once it's totality, it's it's weird because I watched another like TikTok or something where they're like, the I'm making moon the kids wear glasses. Is We're the perfect all wearing size glasses. and the perfect distance <laughs> from the sun to totally cover it up. It's yeah. like, last it's time, incredible that would that would work it was, out like that. Last time it was a partial eclipse in 2017, and I I the kids and I made like the cereal box thing where you can like look into it. It, it it's a little craft but uh, <laughs> no um, i did that as a kid yeah, i made that yeah. little box yes and when the, yep when the eclipse came my father said you're not going outdoors period box oh. or no box oh oh no why he not let me go out because he was too scared i was going to look up and get blinded oh my god <laughs> wasn't that the year that trump was just like <laughs> that, that could be like what a... happened to the guy oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a meme he was president was it 2017 uh, yeah. Then you go yeah. out and like everybody's like, don't look uh, at it. And Trump's just and like. And Trump's like, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I. Uh... So there's well, that's different... very exciting. Yeah, I hope you guys survive the apocalypse. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, me too. <laughs> yes. But also not. I mean, if it's the actual apocalypse, it's like, do you <laughs> really, really want to. They always talk about how, how to survive the <laughs> apocalypse. <laughs> don't. Ah. <laughs> uh... Like, right, I'm not yeah, so you got sure. Plenty of freeze dried food. And yeah. Guns and ammo. Can of spam. And... Yeah. Some spam. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, this has been so much fun again, Jacob. Yeah. Thank you so much, and what uh, what a perfect time. I feel like this was meant to be because you actually had some time off, and that you would spend it with us. Thank you, because um, we were like, oh, you know what. It's time to bring a guest back on. Yeah, and we haven't done that in a long time. You were the first. I was like, he was so much fun, you know, so much fun. <laughs> uh, I've, I've had a blast. I mean, this has been, you guys really do this well. I like your backdrop, Liberty Late Night. Oh, thanks. And the way you, the way you drop my screen in there is really snazzy. Yeah, and then you. all the, the little messages down here. Yeah. This has been you can see you, Ryan pure Edwards. Pleasure. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, Ryan well, says he loves you. Ryan Edwards <laughs> says, "Tell him I love him." <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much, Ryan. Feelings mutual. <laughs> thank you for uh, being here. I'm glad you liked our little, our little, our little, you for, know, setup here. Thanks yeah. for hunting me down. This has been really nice. Thank it was you. meant to be. I feel like since thanks you have for a weekend out, off, Jocelyn. thank you for everything that you're doing. We're gonna we're gonna follow you and and really thanks for bringing oh, that's back Jocelyn. the whole like, I know Jocelyn. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the whole the true meaning of Liberty. the Libertarian yeah. Party, you know, the principled Keep meaning it of it. I like it. We need well, it. Well, it's 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 we we hold the key to getting out of this mm -hmm. morass, and yeah. uh, we have to always remember that that we're the key. Yeah, and uh, we got to be true to ourselves in order to lead America. I like it. I like it. I like it because we need out. Yeah. <laughs> we do need uh, out. Yeah, we're we're in these this little cage, big cage. But, but yeah. of course, look yeah. at it this way, though. <laughs> look at it this way. Okay, so we have a lot of it fun advancing liberty, right? Yeah. Imagine if we get liberty, we're going to be totally bored because we have nothing to work toward. Oh anymore. my gosh! We'll still fight each other. Oh, there will be infighting. <laughs> there will be lots of stuff to do. Oh, okay. Oh, will yeah, you, I feel much better now. We'll use the time to be more productive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? That's a whole other thing. You know, yeah. was, I forget who they were, but one of the founding fathers says, wherever there is liberty, that is my home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost certain, I think it was Thomas Paine that said, wherever there is not liberty, that is my home. Oh. Gross. Oh. <laughs> well, because he wanted to be fighting for liberty. Yeah, oh. there you go. <laughs> There you go. Go oh, out okay. and find find uh, those folks who are libertarians and don't know it we'll yet. We'll liberate ourselves yeah. and then we'll exactly. liberate Canada. <laughs> exactly. Right? Uh, oh, so. Carl is excited that you were here. Awesome guest. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Have a wonderful You're welcome. weekend. Thank you. Enjoy. Rest and relax. Rest, Enjoy relax. your Easter. Easter. Yep, Happy yep. Easter to you and to your puppy dog too. Yeah. Give her some <laughs> Thank love. Thank you for us. remembering her. Yeah. Where absolutely. is she? She's yeah. 
She's she's very good in my show. She just lies here yeah. very quiet. That's a, what? I love a, a yeah. docile dog. Yeah. 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 Give her a Thank hug you for so me. much, you guys. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> good night. Okay. Take care. Happy Easter. Bye bye. Thank you. Again, what a fun time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we were nervous because it's like when you interview somebody already and then you I used up all your questions. Yeah. And, and you know what? I haven't really, we haven't done interviews in a yeah. while. So I was like, oh my gosh. But I'm like, we're just hanging it's out a with somebody that we have. It's someone that we've talked to before that we really enjoyed. And yeah. so we went through so many different things again, oh you know, gosh. starting out. It, it, it well, with the dog, of course, you know. We start. And we then, got that out of the way. Sorry, then, Ryan, you missed that. I know. We, you, we got to see the. Ryan, it's, it's a golden. You missed the dog. It's a nice, oh. docile golden laying Sweetheart. next to Sweetheart. Oh, my gosh. Um, You really should uh, go back and watch the very beginning because I asked right away about about Cassie. <laughs> yeah, immediately. That's the first question. Yeah, and Show so, us your dog. She was right there. So go back and watch that because, yep. Mm hmm. This is the libertarian version of the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> oh, conversation is more yeah. apt than interview. Yeah, it's fun to just chat, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's that's like, the angle we have to go with. That's um, what we're best at. And that that's it. Yeah, that's where I am. Um, oh, yeah, that... Has Cassie in it. Thanks for there hanging out, go. Jocelyn. Yeah, thank you so much. I hope so I'm saying much. that right, yep. Jocelyn. It looks right. Um, you clipped a great yeah. quote, too. In, in Twitch or whatever. Them. I gotta start doing that. I'm, s it's I'm so bad at. It it just like, takes a lot of time to go through, and remember and like. Well, that's why we have to write stuff down. I wrote something down and then I didn't do anything yeah. with it. We last are year. a chatty bunch. <laughs> 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 you guys are mm -hmm. fantastic. Yes. I apologize that we didn't ask all your questions. I know. It's hard yeah. to segue mm -hmm. in when when we are having the conversation. Yeah. Like, I'm curious about. What was the RFK stuff I have, you were talking about? I have about? a really hard time reading. Yeah, that's kind of me, and um, then I try to interject sometimes because Mary has to keep the conversation. I'm listening, and it's like if I read something, I'm like, wait, I I'm, can't read. I'm integrating like what I read to what they're saying, and then I'm like, oh no, 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 and I forgot. So, um, you guys, I hope you chat enough. as always is the show. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, we would just talk to Jacob ourselves if you guys weren't here. But it's like y'all make the show, you know, yeah. with your with your interactions and things, and we see. Thanks for being here. Yeah, and thanks for coming in today. We ask questions and uh, that you have asked. It's just been it's fun as always. Fun. Yeah, we gotta we gotta fun, do more guests. Fun, fun Friday. Yeah. All right, so we'll try to do fun, games. Fun Friday, FFF. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, there you go, FFF. So we'll do. Uh... Post some links again just for, because FFF, I said Fun Fun Friday. Yeah, FFF.org. <laughs> right? So we'll do Cooking with Dave, Game Night, Ruining AI, and then Interviews. And that's a month. Okay. That's not too much. We could always do Cooking with Dave, Game Night, something that Mary does. I'm not so sure folks want to see that. No. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why is it raining oh, no, so much there? Oh, Carl. I think it rains. I think I think what it is is your perspective is it doesn't rain in California. And when it does, it's cause no, it's just because it's raining get, every day here. They I know, but they get rain. Oh, they get flooded. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like rain here where event. we get rain for like seven days straight and it's maybe just, the it's streets just are backed week. up a little bit it's a little bit of flooding here and there we're built yeah. for it mm -hmm. but also you're in california who wants to see rain no that's not what you're there for <laughs> that's so cool oh okay so Connor says i think our country will need a major fallout before we can see a third party take hold yeah uh i think we're having a major fallout i feel like that's we where gotta, we are like, yeah mm -hmm. Because I was talking to a guy and I'm like, oh, the prices are so expensive. And he's like, oh, greedflation. And I'm like, oh, I can't talk to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. understand. Um. <laughs> this is water blues from the sky. So Carl says seven uh, years of drought and then two years <laughs> torrential rains. So. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, man. Uh, I know you think things are bad right now. 
So people but say like, way worse. what's your five year plan? And my answer <laughs> is no, the rapture. <laughs> oh, like the rapture. Jesus is coming for me. <laughs> also, yeah, That's Easter Sunday, Christ plan. is King. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We will proclaim. Yeah. So and today's Good Friday. So and uh, it was Good Friday. Yeah, and and Sunday is Easter. So. Uh, we will be doing the bunny stuff and I don't know how the bunny got intertwined <laughs> into Jesus. Um, uh, but it was our, when the, the Christians took over the, our, the holiday from the, yeah. what do they call we'll it? Be, we'll be doing bunny and chocolate and all that, but we're going to, we're going to be doing Jesus, you know, church and all that. So <laughs> where um, guns will matter. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to keep them. Okay. So, but like, did guns you hear him say, and I did not know this. I did not realize that people in what year were told to turn in your gold oh or you will so, be uh you will be it's a, a, a crime yeah that's that's what i said it, it makes me judge our current uh, generation less to know that a past generation turned in their gold <sighs> And so IOUs. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah. IOUs that they instantly said, well, we said it was worth mm -hmm. this much gold, but actually it's 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 fluid. It's, it's Okay, not... so we're allowed to own gold again. Okay. So we're allowed to You're allowed own, to own it. Own it. Yeah. But yes. you can't use it as money. Right. Otherwise it has so, to be taxed. We have to wait till everything falls apart and then we can say we have this gold piece. Can I have some bread? <laughs> like ah. It's so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I was talking to you about that, making, like, videos for, like, little quick dummy videos oh, about oh, how yeah. monetary, how the, how the. It's probably no beer. I dropped the one. It should oh, be good by that's now. Fine. It's fine. People find a way around <laughs> nah. things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the government would be like, nah. Mm, no <laughs> i need i need to carry i need to carry cash on me it's so weird that now it's like carrying cash is the new gold where it's like they don't carry cash use your card mm -hmm. use your oh boy they're yeah like a lot of places are like we don't take cash anymore <clears throat> so i don't know the whole thing is just it's all really really weird there's, i don't but there's know also what to places do. that'll take cash at a discount because yes they ain't because you have cash <laughs> and that is wonderful where you ask for can't the cash discount your like, ius can't be tracked like listen i'm gonna pay you in cash thanks for coming in ryan much? and thanks for introducing <laughs> us the first time ryan's Thank the you. one who got jacob yeah. on here Play three your years ago games. Play your games. Yeah. <laughs> thanks ryan because you brought jacob into our lives into lln so oh, the bag checkers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i, I want to get into that one time where they're like can i see a receipt no <laughs> with a walmart yeah. reader <clears throat> no i'm just gonna leave i paid for my stuff i'm gonna go am i being detained or am i free to go you're really gonna tell <laughs> that 65 or 70 year old person that's uh yeah, he's well, he's very accessible. You. Yeah, that's all I do. To just leave. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> They're gonna charge you. See, I love self checkout because I hate interacting with humans, and I'm better at it than them. Most of them. There's the, every once in a while, I'll get a I'll get a cashier, and I'm like, "Damn, you're good." Mm -hmm. Like oh. Dave would also before self checkout, he because he self checkouts I, I anytime he can. Um, but yes, anytime you load the conveyor, I sort it by weight category. Yes. How is it going to go into the cart? Yeah. And then how so, is it going to go in my trunk from there? Yes. So, but like, but also it's important in category, you know, yeah. where it's like, the, I want all my cold stuff together because right. I don't want to get mixed up with warm stuff. And that might they're going to try to put the, the, they're going to do their own, their, the beef in with the, the, <laughs> the mousse and the shampoo. And it's like. I don't want my shampoo touching oh, my beef. Oh, they know that. They know that, you that know, like, but they do health anyway. and body doesn't yeah. go with food. Mm -hmm. Most Bag of them groceries know that. is a lost art. Right? <laughs> yeah. Have you mm -hmm. considered autism? And I judge, mm -hmm. I judge them hard. I'm like, I judge the people in front of me for not <laughs> sorting their stuff. I judge the cashier for not bagging it correctly. Oh, That's why it's just better that I do it myself. <laughs> like, nobody's <laughs> feeling it's hurt. They cannot legally search that bag on him. <laughs> 
but no, Dave has, he really taught me so that when I go in by myself, yeah. I'm like, how would Dave do this? Oh yeah. You, know? you put the like, bread in, in the soft stuff last because last. they'll, they will bury that. Oh, they will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put the eggs mm -hmm. like very last, even after bread. Cause I don't know. You can put eggs on bread, but if you put anything on eggs, eggs ain't cheap. You can cheap. put bread on eggs. <laughs> you can put bread on eggs unless it's rye. <laughs> that was like, like when I, when I was a <laughs> bus boy, boy. I'd, I'd be busting tables at Eaton Park and I'd be like, Oh it man, I'm, I'm doing this so efficiently. <laughs> like I'm in, in my head space. Like I'm, they should have yeah. busboy Olympics because I would rock that shit. <gasps> you would. I had, I had waitresses would. tipping me when that wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. I was so good. Like, wow, you cleaned that table fast. Mm -hmm. I kept and... all their areas clean. Yeah. All huh? their areas clean. You mean the table and the, tables. the seats. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they were tipping me. Oh my gosh, Carl. <laughs> Hell yeah. Are you kidding me? Okay, so this this bothers me. And I did it today. Uh, because, and I did it the right way. So I went into self-checkout and I bought three, two liters of pop soda, Coke, whatever you want to call it. Yes. I need to have some Coke soda, pop, whatever in my life. Now, nope. <laughs> um, it was on sale. So I knew Dave wouldn't yell at me for getting it. And <laughs> I put them into a bag and then I took the bag by the handles and I put it into another bag. And then you got to put the handles and together. And then you put those handles together. Otherwise it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. So now it's double bagged. There was a girl one time at a, gr a grocery store and she was like, do you want these double bagged? Okay. They were uh, <laughs> like four glasses, glass jars Plus of spaghetti, spaghetti sauce. sauce. <laughs> yes. And I said, yes, please. And so she put the the jars in the first bag, tied a knot in it, and set it in another bag. And then... Don't you understand me, how physics works? Yeah, and I was like, now it's actually heavier because we have you an added extra a bag. bag. <laughs> <laughs> and they broke. Do you remember? Uh. They broke in the neighbor's driveway. Um, but I was like, someone need like... You're not books like you're book smart, maybe, but you're not no, that's, like street smart. Like it's you like don't... like when I'm training people at work. It's like you can't. I can't physics. teach you yes. mm -hmm. how the world works. Mm -hmm. I can only show you this job. Like if you don't understand X Y Z, get me another bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's just like double bagging. The point of the it parents. is to like to to have like. I just, I don't. Which reminds me, I have to. I think I have already explained to the kids about double bagging. Probably. Yeah. Because they go to the store. Because groceries are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not breaking this shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, common sense. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, what's up, Hatch? Same It's all right. Yeah. Thanks I for not being a. And I think we got to go. Yeah, we should. Yeah, Lights should. already turned Unless off. You already, you want to do another thing, but um, I have. What else do we have? All right, so I already, I already, I got to promote these things. Okay, can I go pee while you do that? Nope, we're gonna end it. You're gonna hold it. I'm gonna say we got the Liberty Memes Foundation, which is awesome. They're oh, buying they're vans for yes. people. Please we got the turning. Mobility Dependence Foundation, which is related. They're mm -hmm. perfecting uh, wheelchairs, wheelchairs and stuff yeah. mm -hmm. because evidently the government fucked that up too. Imagine that. <laughs> We got some of us, which was doing our music, but I lost all that when our hard drive crashed, mm -hmm. so I got to get those back. Mm -hmm. Oh, Good. I'm I'm happy to hear that. Carl. That's why I always love the, the the intermission on our movie night. It's like yeah. I hope we added a little comfort. Yeah, yeah. so many links. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I made buttons for. Things uh, that promote. I'm glad you guys are here. Yeah, this makes me happy, and we have Sunday a fun night, night. We're watching mm -hmm. what. My blue heaven. That's Steve right. Martin. Steve Martin. Where he, he's arugula. It's a vegetable. It's gonna arugula. be fun. Oh, yeah, Hang arugula. out. Arugula. Yeah. Look for the link in our either our Discord or our Facebook group. Mm -hmm. If you don't know. If you don't know what it is, because so. we, we have to keep it hidden mm -hmm. so the people don't ban us. The people. The people. The dragons. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. It's just always so fun. Thank I hate, you. I hate saying goodbye. Good night, guys. Good night. 
I don't like your T-Series. Nothing personal, kid. But I must go all out. Just this once. Bob's or Vagana, whichever will it be. Set the fuck down, T-Series. I'm here to spill the real tea. You trying to dethrone me from spot on number one? But you in the air, you lose. So best thing you haven't won. When I'm through with you, we're gonna be completely fucking done. Cause we only just begun. I review you. Zero five is gone, so come on, T series. Looking hungry for some drama. Here, let me serve you, bitch lasagna. Bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna. T series ain't nothing but a bitch lasagna. Bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna. Look at T series, they just crying for their mama. Bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna. T series ain't nothing but a bitch lasagna. Bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna. is bob and why you wanna kiss him Ew. i'm a blue eyes white dragon while well, you're just dark magician Oof. you got a fifth of the population in your nation but i got 90 rolls of worlds to hold your defecation multipotlo what the fuck is that even supposed to mean your language sounds like it come from a mumbo rap community no papa no papa yes papa johnny now down all of the sugar and let's throw this fucking party with some bitch lasagna bitch lasagna look at these series they just Crying for their mama, bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna. T series ain't nothing but a bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna. Look at T series, they just wet in their pajama, bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna. T series ain't nothing but a bitch lasagna. You got a population of 1.32 billion, but most your videos can't see. Magic Potty Baby learned to use her potty. Flush and you're ready for next time. Magic Potty Baby, I'm so glad that you're mine. Magic Potty Baby and her Magic Potty. No water, no mess. Batteries not included.